Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending the May 20th, 2019 Planning Board hearing for the Town of Scarborough. If I could have everyone join me in uh, saluting the flag and say Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Um, Doreen, could you please give the roll call? Nicholas McGee? Here. Rachel Hendrickson? Here. Roger Bealey? Here. Robin Saunders? Here. Richard Duperry? Here. Rick Munking? Here. And Jennifer Ladd? So we had uh, received word that Jennifer uh, might be running late to tonight's meeting. So in the interim, uh, Rick, you will be, Rick Duperry, you will be a full voting member until she arrives. Mr. Uh, Chair? Yes. I've left some of my notes on the projects in my car, so I'm just going to go out and them if you don't mind just to make sure see you in a minute <laughs> <laughs> um, next we have the approval of the minutes for April 8th and April 29th 2019 and we'd like to make a motion so moved I got a motion do I have yeah. a second motion a second any discussion on the minutes seeing none all in favor so this to be approved thank you um, can I have a quick straw poll of members in the audience who's here for state manufactured homes <laughs> so, all right, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a motion to move item number seven, state manufactured homes, uh, up until item number five. I'm just going to have them switch spots for the time being. I've made the motion. Is there a second? Second. I'm going to motion a second. Any discussion on moving the agenda item? All in favor? Okay. So, with that being said, State Manufactured Homes, Inc. requests a site plan amendment for 126 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map R76, Lot 7. And the applicant, just introduce yourself and... Um, will I, will and I introduce? Oh, sure. We'll let you go, too. <laughs> <laughs> I want to have Jamel speak first. Um, and you want to tee this up for us? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project's located in the industrial uh, zoning district within the existing Hillcrest community. So the applicant was last before the board in April. Um, and they're proposing, just a reminder, they're proposing a 3,000 square foot building addition to the existing Hillcrest Community Center. Uh, so a few comments. Uh, given the proposed land use is not defined in the town's off-street parking requirements, the number of parking spaces shall be determined by the board based on the nature of the site, the intensity in use, and the parking demand expected. As requested by the board, the applicant has delineated the parking on the site and provided additional information uh, specific to the amount of parking needed. So this evening, the board will need to determine if the amount of parking spaces is adequate uh, based on the information provided. Also requested by the board, the applicant has provided additional erosion control measures to assure no adverse impacts occur within the abutting natural resources. Uh, given the proximity to these resources, staff has provided a condition of approval that requires a construction barrier to be survey located along the wetland line to ensure the development does not impact the wetlands on the site. Uh, staff has also suggested the applicant uh, consider providing a paved walkway through the grassed island on the property uh, to provide uh, direct pedestrian access to this from the street along with additional striping in the parking area. So these are the main elements that staff identified um, and the rest of the comments can be reviewed administratively if the board is comfortable. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Jamal. Um, so if the applicant would just kind of like to give us a, an overview, we did see this last time and maybe some of the things that may have changed uh, and then maybe address some of the major uh, items that staff has noted for a board discussion. Sounds great. Uh, Andy Morrill, BH2M Engineers, uh, Civil Engineer. Also with me are the owners of State Manufactured Homes, uh, Teresa DeFossis, Jacob Smith. As you saw, a big crowd from uh, the Hillcrest community. We appreciate you coming out. Uh, as Jamal said, we were last here in uh, April 29th. Uh, briefly, I'll go through some of the minor changes we made to the plans. Uh, we added parking striping on either side of the existing building. We've, we've shown 19 parking spaces uh, striped in the existing parking lot. Uh, we've also added two uh, pedestrian walkways, providing access to the existing doors on each, uh, each of the uh, sides of the building, uh, providing pedestrian access both to Hillcrest Avenue and the access road. What's the one with the cherry? Cherry. 
uh, Cherry Lane to the, to the left of the existing building. Uh, we've also provided a turning template showing that a fire truck could adequately turn around. I understand that's been reviewed by the fire chief and approved uh, by the fire chief. We added some landscaping in the existing grassed island out in front of the building along Hillcrest Avenue. We also showed some existing trees that currently exist in that location. Um, there was some discussion at the last meeting about whether sprinklers will be required in the building. It is in fact required. Uh, we've added notes to the plans uh, to support that. Uh, there, were, there were a whole bunch of other minor comments that we've addressed, but you can see those in our cover letter if the board's interested or if, if you have a question, I'm happy to touch on them. Uh, we did meet with, with planning staff on May 6th and the fire chief. I think uh, you know, the, the meeting went well. Everybody kind of liked the, the, the direction we were headed with the revisions. We did receive uh, staff comments on Friday. I think they're all relatively minor in nature and, and easily addressed prior to the endorsement of the Mylar, but I wanted to touch on a a few of the things, um, we actually submitted revised plans to uh, planning staff today. I understand they uh, don't have time to review them prior to this meeting, but we have made these changes. I just want to touch on them briefly. Um, the applicant did hand out uh, kind of a, a quick response to a lot of these comments along with some pictures of uh, the grassed island out in front of the facility along Hillcrest Avenue. Um, I think those will provide you some evidence and, and maybe help in the discussion that we're going to have after this. Um, Jamel had brought up the idea of a condition of approval to have the wetland uh, construction barrier along the wetlands survey located. The applicants uh, would support uh, that condition of approval. Uh, the applicants would, would prefer not to extend the pedestrian walkway across the existing grassed island. We're, we're, we look forward to having that discussion with the board this evening. Uh, our concern is, is directing traffic in that location with the landscaping. We'd like to kind of keep the pedestrian uh, movements to the two intersections of Cherry and uh, the other intersection on Hill, Hillcrest Avenue. Most of the foot traffic, that's where it's headed in this current uh, configuration. We'd like to try to keep it that way, but again, we're happy to have that discussion with the board. Um, we've extended this striping on the western side of the existing building. Uh, you could see I showed it just to the end of the striped parking. I've extended it all the way across of, of Cherry, uh, similar to what we did over uh, towards, on, on, towards Hillcrest. That's the majority of the, the changes that are, the major changes that are required. Again, there's a bunch of minor changes, but I don't think we need to, to go into those tonight. Um, as I said, they're all, all pretty minor in nature. Applicants are, are pretty hopeful we can uh, be considered for an action on this item tonight. They're, they're quite anxious to get uh, the construction process started. So uh, with that, I throw it back to the board and, and happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> Before I, I get into the next segment here, can I just ask you to quickly identify on the plans that you have here, yeah. uh, where those pedestrian walkways, you said uh, by volume or by use, what you're currently experiencing, where those are located on there? Yep. Uh, where, where we're proposing them currently? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you look on the, uh, on the plan, I don't have my, my pointer here, and it doesn't work on this board anyway, but... Um, uh, the existing building, Jamel can probably point to it, uh, out in front of that building, right in front of the door, we've had a pedestrian walkway coming straight across the parking lot. That's shown with a kind of a cross-hatched line on the plan. That's the pedestrian walkway. Um, what I understand from the applicants, most of the foot traffic is coming along Hillcrest Avenue and they come in the intersection to the facility or they come the other direction through the other curb cut on Hillcrest Avenue. Um, we also added a pedestrian walkway up on the western side of the building, uh, again at the same, the door location, and we've extended that all the way out across uh, Cherry. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, we do have, um, typically in a, where this has been heard previously, we wouldn't do public comment, but I will not deny the public if they so choose to speak here tonight. Um, but I would ask you to keep it to three minutes if you, if you have to. Um, if you have new information, um, I know a lot of you were here in support the other night. If uh, you have new information or new reason to be uh, supportive or even against it, um, just keep it to three minutes. I'll give you a little courtesy tap uh, once you have 30 seconds remaining on your time limit. Um, with that, I ask you to approach the podium if you'd like to speak tonight. 
My name is Peter DeRice. I live at uh, 583 Hickory Lane in uh, Hillcrest. Um, I don't know how many people have been down in that area of late, but it's grown. And uh, the, the, the current clubhouse is not big enough to accommodate a lot of the events that are normally held there. Um, so we are, um, we need to have a big clubhouse to allow for some of the activities uh, that, that go in there. Uh, for the older people, I'm a little bit young myself. But, <laughs> <clears throat> but I think it, it's, it, it's a beautiful area down there. The old, uh, the old part of it is slowly disappearing, and it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's a place that Scarborough, if they take a ride or walk down in there, will be very, uh, very impressed with it. It's come a long ways, and we're all fairly pleased with it. So appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak? Just come approach the podium and state your name for us. My name is Joan Cadillo, and I'm a resident of Hillcrest Pinecrest. And I wanted to say that you have to know one thing about this community center. It's more than just a community center. It's a senior gathering place. It's a place where people get to know each other. And let's face it, a lot of us elders, I hate to say that, are sometimes lonely, have lost a spouse, don't have any connections. This community center represents a place in which we can come together, see each other's needs, enjoy company together, and I feel that it's far more than just, say, a teen center would be or something else. We do so many things from that spot. My husband <clears throat> was the director of uh, Parks and Recreation for South Portland many years ago. When he began, there were, th with the community center that he proposed, there were three people who came. By the time we left to go down to Connecticut for that short term, there were over 300. This tells you something about community centers, but I'm gonna tell you right now, this community center is for people like ourselves who need companionship, who appreciate all the things that the DeFoss family has done to give us enrichment, to, um, to give us um, different activities that involve our health and also pleasurable times, our coffee and donuts. We all get in there and we volunteer. And it's a wonderful place to be and I think it's very important for us to have enough room to be able to enjoy this wonderful gift that the DeFosses family has given to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please approach the podium. My name is Bob Jasperson. I live at 511 Desfosses Ave. Been here two and a half years. Great community. One of the things we do every Thursday night, we have bingo. Now, those of you people who don't understand bingo, it's a great game for us old folks. <laughs> And here's the problem. I got there five, two and a half years ago. Our equipment was kind of faulty and they're old. So consequently, when you pay bingo, you don't have a board to look at to see what numbers have been called, which is important. With this new system we're coming, this new system we're coming in, we're gonna have two big TV screens, we're gonna have a board to look at, and it's gonna make bingo a lot more pleasant to go to. So please, for that alone. <laughs> Give us a vote. Thank you, appreciate that. Mr. Chair, could I make a motion? Uh, still public comment section. I'm Emily Estes and I live at 42 Skyline Street. My late husband and I moved in 72 
when they were just a little community. Now we're a big community. We need the space. We had a meeting the other night, and our room was as packed as this room is right now. And I can say no more than the, both Teresa and Tina. This one here was just a baby when, I, when he came along. But I moved there since 72, and I, I do acknowledge we need more room, as you can see here. Thank you very much. Yes. You approach the podium and just state your name. Uh, my name is Joyce Clauck. My husband, Roland, and I live at 542 DeFosses Avenue uh, in the Hillcrest Retirement Community. Um, we've lived a lot of places in our lives together, and this is one of the best decisions we ever made. Um, we call it the community center, but I would like to say that it is becoming the center of our community because it's a place where we can gather. And there's a lot of happy, wonderful things that go on there, um, knitting groups, crocheting groups, the bing bingo, I heard about bingo. Um, <laughs> exercise, dance classes, there are so many things that go on, but something that I would like to mention is the kind of support that our community members give to one another, not only through the joyful times, but also through times that are a little bit difficult, through illness and sometimes through death. And the DeFosses and the Smith family has opened up our community center to have a celebration of life for many of our families. And this is something to really see when the community gathers together to comfort one another in difficult times. Um, that's kind of what we're all about. And we need the space so that every single one of our members feels that draw and that center. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else here that wants to get up and speak at this time? Good evening. I'm Bill Wallace, and I've been here uh, six years already. That's how I can't get over how fast time goes. But I'm in a beautiful home. I love it here. I enjoy all the people. But I have another thing to tell you. I teach the Bible, and we have a Bible study on Tuesdays. But now I'm going to have to keep my house clean. <laughs> because the, the Bible study can't be uh, here, there in that place for the moment. But anyway, I just hope everybody understands there's a lot of things that go on in this, in this area. And uh, all of a sudden, we're sort of slowed down. And I, would, I hope that we're able to get it, build a, Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Before we get into talking about parking spots instead of bingo screens? <laughs> I have just one word. Sure. Thank you very much. My name is Robert Wallet, and I live on um, Raylene Lane in Hillcrest, and it's the newest uh, phase at Hillcrest. Um, uh, when I sold my past house, I could have bought a house anywhere, but I, I feel that I had the good fortune of come, coming across Hillcrest. Um, but the best fortune was the people that I met uh, through the community center. Um, and I, I mean that from my, from my heart. Uh, like I said, I could have moved in anywhere. I could have bought a house anywhere. But the best part of, the best part of um, uh, for me, of, of living in the community center is the people that I've met 
at the center that we're looking to expand. And um, so we're all pretty excited about the expansion. And, 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 and I hope that, that, uh, that you folks can give that to the, to the, to the to Fosters tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rose Arsenault, and my husband and I have been Hillcrest for 10 years now. And I belong to the Garden Club, and we get to use it once a month. And we have so many more members that we don't have room if you guys don't let us have this big building. <laughs> really. So please do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My name is Dale Perry. I live on Raylene 608. Molly lives there with us. And I just wanted to reiterate on the use of the community service. This is for us to have all our group meetings, but we give back to this Scarborough community also. Through the meetings, we donate, uh, we grow food and give it to Project Grace. Um, we go and we do the soup kitchen in Portland. So we do a lot of good things. We had been watching to buy there for a very long time. My kids were still younger. They're gone. We sold. We moved. We love it. And we love all our friends. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yo, my name is Joanne Mells. I live at 79 Ripscroft. I'm working on my 35th year there. Uh, enjoy it, seen a lot of changes. I like the area because the neighborhood is, everybody watches out for each other. Um, I really enjoy going down to the hall. I do a lot of quilting. I use the tables, use the hall, gone to a lot of the functions. And I really think this is what we need is a bigger hall. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment for this item? No? All right. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. And we're going to turn this back over to the board. Um, Roger, would you like to take first stab at this one? Sure. Uh, first, I'm um, very impressed with the turnout. Um, yeah, we have to. <laughs> um, I guess the, um, the question for me is on the parking and the, um, the striped sidewalks. I'm not quite sure. As I understand it, when people attend, go to the current center, they just basically meander around the island and just basically go there, right? There's no... Correct. Yeah, that would be correct. All right. Yep. Um, it, it, it's the curved island, but it's a sloped granite curbing, so it's, it's something that's easily walked up and over. Okay. It's not like a, you know, a, a seven, eight inch granite curb that you've got a, a big Okay, so they do, they do go across the, uh, the grass island right they, now? They certainly yeah. can. If very, but but they generally rarely. don't. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So I, I'm not quite sure I understand the, the rationale of having a striped walkway coming from the building down to the island because then it doesn't basically go anywhere else. So, and, um, but I do understand the concern about the, about the parking and you know, making sure it's kind of organized so uh, mm -hmm. pedestrians don't get, uh, there's no uh, accidents. So I was just wondering if it makes any sense to have some sort of striping along the edge of the entryways on either side, just to kind of direct the pedestrians to either side. Whatever you want. You know, instead of that center one, I don't know if that makes any sense or not. Yeah, it slows people down. Yeah, what, what we were trying to do was give people that, that park in the, in the parking spots kind of, you know, pedestrian access to the door uh, of the facility. Um, that well, was they, they would generally just get out of their car and just walk right behind the car and go walking right, right. in. Correct. So I, I'll, I'll listen to what my other board members think about that, but it, you know, just to have striped parking that doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, yet I can understand the concern of the board uh, of the uh, department. 
so I can give you a little more information on that. Uh, the reason we don't want to direct the traffic across the island to Hillcrest, Hillcrest is the major road in the community. It's wide, and we don't want to have anybody just walking out and not seeing the cars coming down the street. So that's why we, we were requested to stripe it, and we'll stripe anything you want. Yeah. We'll strike the whole thing, none of it, all of it, doesn't matter. Because, because there's no sidewalks on the road now. No, there's no sidewalks at Hillcrest. So, so people just basically walk up the road or... Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the only concern. I'll just... Cause and you're all set with the amount of proposed parking spaces? Uh, as far as I can tell. I, you know, I mean, they know they... I just want to make sure, because it's one of the items that we do have to yeah. determine whether I mean, or not it's I, adequate. I think, I think they know. Okay. I trust what they... Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Roger. Uh, Robin. Yeah. <clears throat> What's the speed limit on the road? 15. Fifteen. One five. Mm -hmm. Strictly okay. enforced. Strictly enforced. Mm -hmm. And it's largely because you all are walking in most places. Yeah. I didn't... Was that too lenient? I thought every... Just about every... Yeah. <laughs> we, we encourage everybody to walk. Thank you. And so I guess I'm trying to just indicate to my fellow board mm -hmm. members where I'm leaning as far as parking spaces are concerned. And, um, and uh, are we just talking about parking right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, you know, I guess, oh, is it supposed to be? on oops sorry everybody at home <laughs> thank you rachel um and then as far as sidewalks are concerned um and where you stripe them uh, you know i i would want you all to express to the town where people are going to be walking from where those are really needed and mm -hmm. if you feel like you know the the, the stripe path to nowhere <laughs> is where it belongs um I, I guess I, I want the, the striping of the pedestrian way to be where most of you will be walking from. Normally, they come in from Hillcrest on both sides of mm -hmm. that island. Okay. Uh, that seems to be the pathway of choice. Mm -hmm. uh, we striped because that's where the other door was. Okay. The main entrance, we can certainly stripe that and go around the building or to the normal place people normally walk. Mm -hmm. I think and leading it to the island is not the best course, but mm -hmm. we'll certainly do whatever. Right. So so that would be my only sort of recommendation is that if we know where the where the pedestrian traffic is going to be that we try to mm -hmm. capture that and that gets relayed to your engineer and your mm -hmm. engineer relays it appropriately on the plans. Thank you. We will. Yep. I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you, Robin. And who's next? <laughs> Okay, Just ahead, checking to see if this works. Um, it's a new system. Uh, when my husband and I decided to move to Maine and we looked around uh, a lot of communities, um, we got to Scarborough and said, this is a place we can live. This is a place that in, in and of itself is a, is a community. And I really uh, appreciate the role that uh, you folks play in that community. Uh, and that the faucets play in that community, and that came out tonight. Uh, I have no problem with the number of parking spaces. Uh, my concern the last time you were here was whether there was enough space uh, that was going to be used for staff, and when you said mm -hmm. no, all of the staff was going to be parking off-site, and these spaces were going to be used entirely for the community. That took care of that issue for me. Okay. Uh, I do not see the need for a trail of, or a walkway through that center island. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, it 
I think if people want to walk through, they're going to figure out how to how to do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they seem to know how to get there. Now. I I would, uh, and this is this is not a board decision or anything else. I would just suggest that uh, your garden group might want to put some more plants in there, uh, <laughs> and then perhaps encourage folks to move around the island rather than than through it. Okay. But uh, that's up that's up to you folks. We will um, talk to them about that. Hmm? We'll talk to the garden group about that. All right. <laughs> you, can, you can probably take a vote here now if they're interested in doing it. I mean, if you want a little pressure on them yeah. to get it done, <laughs> I can ask them. <laughs> uh, and in terms of the striping from the building to the, uh, the center island, uh, it looks to me as though that that's leads actually past one of the handicapped accessible place spaces which provides mm -hmm. an extra measure of safety mm -hmm. for somebody who needs that space, might be a little slower to mm -hmm. get to it. it. That striping becomes simply a reminder mm -hmm. for people to look after their neighbors. Okay. Yeah. Thank we'll you. do that. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Rick. Um, I really don't have anything other to add. I've looked through everything, and I think it's... Looks good. I'm in favor of it. Thank you. Rick? Yeah, I think it looks good. I might offer a suggestion. I like the idea of having that strike by the handicap and maybe moving it to the new main entrance might and then run the strike. I think it could serve as a traffic calming mm -hmm. mechanism. Um, the other thing I've observed is you might need to show some sort of lighting on that one side of the of the existing building where that handicap <coughs> looks like it's the entrance way now. Um, and you probably need another wall pack on that side entrance that is on the new building that looks like there's a little landing deck and some stairs going down. Oh. Right? Oh, over there. Yeah, yeah. that would be... Um, yeah, so we could definitely add a light there. wall pack mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. because that's an exit. Okay, yeah. we can certainly uh, do that. So uh, I think, you know, and the only other... Uh, thought here would be if you use that handicap and move that strike to the main entrance, um, it could get pretty dark at night. And I'm wondering if a light mounted in that in the median that can shine a, a few candle watts amongst most of those parking spots that might also help for safety and, and uh, especially when we get dark early in the autumn and mm -hmm. in the winter. Okay, we can um, do that, sir. But I, I think 19 spots is fine for what you're all proposing. Mm. Thank you. It's a full house on bingo, and I know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get any commission either at the office. <laughs> Otherwise, I think it's uh, very well uh, ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, having heard from uh, most of the board members, I'm going to concur that um, I think your plan's in pretty good shape at this point. Um, the parking, you know, you, you're going to, you know what you need out there. Mm -hmm. um, and, a, you know, quite frankly, if there's a parking problem out there, it's going to be self-inflicted. Yeah. Um, and and I, I would assume you would be back to yeah. ask for more parking. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that said, uh, we're working up some language right now that um, could hopefully kind of capture what we've been discussing here this evening. Sure. Um, I also want to just take a moment to thank everyone that's come out uh, again. Um, you must be halfway to your minor in civics at this point because <laughs> credit hours wise, you guys are doing great. So uh, thank you again. Can I thank them too for coming? <laughs> yes. And um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a motion. So I move to approve the site plan amendment proje uh, project titled Hillcrest Community Center Building Expansion proposed by State Manufactured Homes, Inc. as depicted on the plan set prepared by BH2M dated 5619 with the following findings and conditions. Findings. The applicant is proposing to construct a 3,027 square foot building in addition to the existing Hillcrest community building with associated utilities and stormwater management infrastructure. The property is located in the industrial zoning district and is identified on Town of Scarborough tax maps as map R76 lot 7. The planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage conditions. The planning board has determined that the parking sp spaces proposed for this project is adequate based on the information provided. Two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, 
the applicant shall revise the plan set to include A, parking lot striping that complements current pedestrian patterns as discussed with the planning board, B, an updated space and bulk matrix that includes the proposed information, C, the proposed parking aisle width 25 feet, D, the required plan note as noted in section 3B8 in the site plan review ordinance, and E, additional lighting fixtures within the parking area and pedestrian, I'm sorry, and eastern building entrance and exit as discussed with the planning board. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Three, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, provide approval from the Scarborough Sanitary District, B, survey locate a construction barrier along the wetland line to ensure that the proposed development does not impact the natural resource. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Four, prior to start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include the appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. That is the motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Show that as unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you all very much. <laughs> okay, we can all go now. So, we, we do have a rest of an agenda, so I know you're going to take a little time to work your way out, but if, if you could, that would be great, so we can get to the rest of our applicants. I'm going to take a quick two-minute break here while that happens. Thanks. I'm going to go ahead and call us back into order. Next item on the agenda is the planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on the proposed amendments to chapter 405, the zoning ordinance to amend section 12H, campus directional signs. Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a quick background uh, before the public hearing. So the proposed amendment to this section of the zoning ordinance is to consider enabling campus directional signs within the CPD zoning district where the Scarborough Downs development is located. The Long Range Planning Committee considered the proposed amendment in early April and provided a favorable recommendation to the Council. Uh, staff has identified what we believe is an administrative oversight in the sign provisions of the zoning ordinance. As currently these signs are not allowed in the CPD district, however they are permitted in all other business districts that have the capacity for large multi-tenant lot developments. Given the standards and development envisioned in the CPD district, the Long Range Planning Committee recommends these proposed amendments to allow for campus directional signs within this district. And I'll stop there. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Jamal. Mm -hmm. um, so as such, this is a public, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> public hearing. Was anybody like, is anybody here to speak on the signage for the CPD district? 
No. Okay. We'll close public comment. Um, do the, the board, do we have any comments on this? Um, as Jamel stated, this is most likely an oversight. We've got some fixing to do. Rachel? Yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm in favor of common sense. <laughs> uh, and this simply is a common sense change. Thank you. Anyone else in favor of common sense? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, seeing no other comment, I guess uh, a positive review out of the Scrubber Planning Board on this change would be welcome. Uh, next item, the Planning Board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405B of the Site Plan Review Ordinance to amend Section 3B, Site Plan Application Procedures and Action. Jim Al. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so at the request of the Ordinance Committee, uh, staff has been asked to look at providing draft language for modifications to the Site Plan Review Ordinance to allow for notification to abutters. This issue came to the attention of the Ordinance Committee from an abutter to a property that was subject to a recent uh, board decision. While the board's agendas are made publicly available online and through an on email listserv, there's currently no requirement in the ordinance for direct notification to abutters when a site plan application has been made. Staff has provided suggested language that requires notices be sent to abutters within 500 feet of the parcel on which the proposed development is located. The notice shall be sent out at least 10 days prior to the upcoming board meeting. Staff would also like to point out that the subdivision ordinance and plan development ordinance uh, requires such notice on all applications to the board. Thank you, Jamel. Uh, with that, we do have a public hearing to commence. So uh, if anyone here wants to speak on this item, we ask you just limit your comments to three minutes. I'll give you a little courtesy tap when there's 30 seconds left to go. Um, so you can try to wind it down on time. Um, I, that, I, just, I have a prepared statement that's a little bit longer than that. I'll try to get it down to three minutes. Is it? Yeah. Is there something also maybe you can submit to staff that can share with us in uh, a yeah, full I written have form? A full copy that I'll submit uh, to staff. Fantastic. If um, you could just state your name and uh, my name is Thomas Micho. Uh, I reside at 149 Old Blue Point Road. Um, <clears throat> before I begin, I would like to get a minor clarification. The word "abutting property owners" is used here. A phrase, excuse me. Um, does that in, will that include for the purposes of this ordinance will that include property owners that abut across a public way a street or road i can try and answer that um it, it's 500 feet from the property boundary so okay including a buffer of 500 feet okay in all directions okay um then given that information i would like to voice my support for this proposal um, and provide a vivid example of why it is needed uh, last fall i was in the midst of teaching two classes at SMCC, tutoring five hours a week there, taking two graduate level statistics courses at USM, and working there 10 hours a week as a graduate assistant. Um, this was an extremely heavy workload, but I'm sure there's others in town who were equally busy. Um, at the end of September, my mother-in-law died. To expect every property owner in Scarborough to review every single agenda item for every planning board meeting is not a reasonable assumption. Um, the listserv mentioned uh, earlier is of little help, and often the agendas themselves are not, do not contain complete information. Um, the last thing on my mind last October was the possibility that the planning board would approve without notification to several property owners abutting directly across the street, the complete removal of a buffer of old growth trees that separated a business from the residential neighborhood in which that business resides. I had expected notification because in the past I had been notified of similar proposals and I did participate in those meetings. Um, I also expected the planning board to protect the interests of all stakeholders, not simply those present at the meeting because in the past it has and it has a legal obligation to do so. The very first paragraph of the site plan review ordinance states, and I quote, the purpose of site plan review is to ensure that the design, layout, and construction of these additions to the community constitute suitable development and will not result in a detriment to the neighborhood, community, or environment. Section 4F, paragraph 3, specifically states, wherever practical, existing specimen trees, tree clusters, or other significant vegetation shall be preserved. This language is not ambiguous. To this day, I have no idea what perversion of interpretation could have allowed such a radical deviation from the law or how the board could have been negligent in their duty to the community at large. And because there was no notification, 
here's what happened. The neighborhood found out what was happening only after it was approved and work had already begun. It was necessary to send an avalanche of emails to get adequate clarification about exactly what had been approved. And it wasn't until after the appeal deadline had already lapsed that I was informed that I could appeal. I won't describe my mood at that time, except that for many weeks I considered organizing a class action lawsuit against the town for all of the reasons just given above. The total property, la property value loss is substantial. A huge amount of time, both my own and that of town employees, has been and will continue to need to be spent on this issue and could have been avoided with reasonable notification. Lack of notification, yep, 30 I don't mean, seconds. I don't mean to cut you uh, off. I'm actually gonna let you go for another two minutes. It's not a huge line and okay. uh, I just wanna let you I'll know. I'll give you a one. courtesy tap with 30 seconds more left, all right? Okay, yep. Um, so as I just said, this could have been avoided with reasonable notification. Um, lack of notification decreases participation in the planning process and forces the planning board to operate in a vacuum. It creates a backdoor for individuals and businesses who wish to circumvent notification to their neighbors and avoid engagement with other stakeholders. And it puts the town at risk of lawsuits from those who are thus admitted. In short, the current process does not serve the people of Scarborough very well. As Scarborough grows, greater oversight will be needed to maintain the current character and quality of life here. And residents need confidence that the town is engaging all affected parties when a noticeable change is made. To do this, reasonable, effective notification is needed, and I again express my support for this improvement, which will bring the site planning process in line with both the subdivision and zoning ordinances. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hard copy? Who gets the hard copy? Uh, so, uh, if there's anyone else that would like to get up and speak, um, I will allow that person as well five minutes of time. All right, seeing no further public comment on this, I'll close public comment. Uh, the board, I'll jump in. Um, I think this is just, this is also just a smart move on our part. Um, I don't think having public involvement at an earlier stage is going to is going to be a bad thing. It's not a detriment to what we try to do here. Um, I think it's a good example of what can happen when um, something gets missed. And uh, for, for what it's worth, my two cents, I think it's a, it's a good change. Anyone else have any comments? No? All right. I'm going uh, to suggest we send a positive review from the planning board down uh, up on the chain on this one. All right. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Next item, number eight. And Child Enterprises LLC requests a master plan review as part of a planned development project for 79 County Road, Assessor's Map R15, Lot 78. Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project is located in the TBC2 zoning district on the corner of County Road and Saco Street. So the applicant was last before the board in April for a master plan review. A master plan review, which is uh, step two in the plan review process, is required for any projects in this zone that include a restaurant with drive through service. So as the board may recall, now the proposed building location for the building on the property was not zoning compliant, and the board was unable to take final action in April. The applicant has revised the plan, and the building now appears to meet the zoning standards in regards to setbacks. Staff would also like to point out an error um, in the review comments memo provided to the board and the applicant. Uh, the memo states that a 15-foot green buffer strip is required. However, the zoning standards call for a 10-foot buffer strip along County Road. It appears that the applicant is proposing a 12-foot buffer strip, um, and staff recommends that the applicant provide a plan note stating that the buffer strip shall be maintained. Staff was a little confused about the applicant's plans for the historic building on the property, uh, so they should discuss their plans for this building with the board. And staff also recommends that the applicant incorporate the mini park into the first phase of development, given its proximity to the proposed drive through coffee shop. So staff provided the board with a draft motion uh, with conditions for your consideration this evening. Thank you, Jamal. I appreciate it. Uh, if the applicant would like to come on up and kind of produce, uh, just discuss the elements that may have changed since the last time we saw this. Sure. And then, of course, uh, any staff comments that you feel that um, you need to address right now. Okay. Thanks. Um, Sean Thies with CES Engineers representing the applicant tonight. Um, since the last meeting, we've uh, changed the location of the building it's shifted to the um, 
in a northeasterly direction, assuming north is straight up on the plan, but to the upper right. Um, so now we're, it's located closer uh, to County Road than it is to Saco Street, uh, making it compliant with the, with the ordinance. And it meets all the setbacks in that way from, from both Saco Street and County Road. Um, in addition to that change, I would say that's the most significant as far as shifting the building. We've also, there was a request to show a conceptual parking layout and how the entrance to that uh, parking for the future development would look coming off the driveway, um, which was added, I believe it's probably Sorry on the next, next sheet. I don't know why it's on here. One second, I'm sorry. There we go. There it is. So as part of the master plan, we showed how that connection could look to go into the potential future development. And we've added some of the other features that were requested or mentioned at the last meeting as far as buffers along Saco Street to screen the drive through from the street. Um, calling out the area for the uh, mini park on the corner. And um, I believe we added the underground utility connection off of uh, Saco Street to the building. There was a comment on um, that not being shown as far as the utilities being shown on the plan. Um, the only comment maybe that uh, that would address when I mentioned the uh, staff mentioned making the mini park um, part of the first phase of the development is the the mini park was to um, as a uh, as a historical representation for the for the existing building which is uh, potentially going to be demolished in the future there's no plans to do anything with it at this point but if it were to be demolished there was um, to make a historical area on site to honor that structure so um, without demolishing that um, house as part of the first phase, um, the mini park wouldn't, uh, I guess, exist until that was to happen. So, um, and then some of the other, I think that talks about um, easements, there was a, a comment in uh, the staff report about a, an ease, uh, granting easements to the town for potential sidewalks in the future along uh, County Road and Saco Street, which I think is uh, um, reasonable, but we just want to make sure that they didn't necessarily interfere with um, the buffers that are required to be on site and what exactly the size of those easements might be. But I would think that that could be uh, discussed with the town staff prior to the site plan review process. The 15 feet seemed a little bit excessive to me. I, I believe it was a 15 foot dimension that was mentioned. Um, and I measured it earlier. There's currently, I think, 18 feet from the edge of county road uh, edge of pavement of county road to the property line as far as 18 feet of room for a sidewalk and 15 feet in addition to the current 18 seems a little bit excessive for just to fit a sidewalk in there but um i think that can be worked out with with the town staff to, if if it's deemed that an easement is needed thank you very much Um, Rachel, do you want to go with this one? Sure. Um, I, I do want to highlight the, the issue connected with the, the uh, Ralph Tam homestead. And when this lot was up for prior development, the board wrestled with uh, what would happen with that and how it would be treated. Uh, and certainly that's something you folks are going to have to spend some time thinking about. Uh, I think the recommendation that we had is that the foundation stones of that if it was going to be torn down and that was the plan the foundation stones were old and i think uh, dressed granite and that they be used as part of the park so uh congratulations now you have that thorny problem of trying to figure out uh, how to treat that that property in terms of whether it's going to be preserved or demolished and be used as part of a mini park. So um, that's something I'm going to be anxious to see, you know, what you're, what you're thinking about and how you're doing that. I have a question for the staff, and that is, um, 
uh, a statement under Section 7E E2C. Uh, to this end, staff recommends that the applicant consider a write-in only entrance to the site from County Road in an effort to alleviate additional traffic queuing at the intersection. Um, we usually have a lot of discussion around whether we're going to have a second entrance uh, on, when you have corner lots. Um, and th that discussion usually takes place over several meetings uh, as we take a look at traffic studies. Uh, Jamel, were you thinking about that that right only right right in only entrance would go to the next phase of development, the larger phase, or be used for Aroma Joe's? Um, I guess either. Um, it was we talked to our traffic consultant, and it was a suggestion by by him um, that just to reduce traffic through a, an already busy intersection. Um, for, I guess so the answer would be for the coffee shop. I'm not sure how it could be configured, um, but it was a suggestion that our traffic consultant did have um, for the project, just sort of offline I, with staff. Yeah, I, I, I think that whole suggestion needs to be reconsidered because as I look at it, um, nobody could actually enter in from County Road and actually make an order, make their order at the, uh, at the window. Uh, without complete reconfiguration of the whole site. Now, if it's a question of an entrance uh, right in only for the next phase of development for the larger buildings, what that then raises a question of where in relationship to the stormwater, the utilities, um, what else have we got septic. there, the septic. Uh, I, I would have to see an awful lot of evidence that it's something that would work. Uh, before, before I would agree to that sort of a uh, an entrance, if it's something that the applicant is interested in pursuing, uh, it's up to the applicant to do that. Just knowing that there are some complications uh, connected with that that sort of a decision. So, if you want to bring that recommendation to us uh, at some point, really come up with some good plans and a good traffic study. So I, if, I, if I could just mm -hmm. comment on that. So um, I agree that that, I, pardon me, I'm Tanya Tyra Trinket. I am the Aroma Joe's franchisee. I currently have 79 County Road under contract. I've been working with CES to develop it, and um, it's been quite a project. <laughs> uh, so I love the idea of a right-hand turn uh, in. However, I have no plans to do anything to the Ralph Thames home. And I believe that bringing in a right hand turn would mean that we would have to do something with it. And I, to be completely honest, right now that house is not interfering. It is a historic um, monument. Um, I would prefer to just leave it as is. Um, and and I, like you, Rachel, have a love of landscaping. So when the time comes for that property to come down, um, I am aware of what has been proposed in uh, with the previous uh, approved plan. Um, when that, um, you know, the the time frame of advertising that the home would be free uh, if someone wanted to come and relocate it for a period of 30 days, and then if no one did, it could be. Uh, it could be demolished, but uh, we would use those granite uh, foundation pieces in that mini park. Um, I, I intend actually, as it is, to probably put like a picnic table or something underneath that tree. It's a really lovely tree with that little monument to, um, to Ralph Thames. Um, I know that in speaking with Jamel in the past that there um, is a more pedestrian traffic in that area than I even, even realized that there was because of the campground down the street. So um, the, the building that I am putting up actually has not only a drive through but also a walk-up window to help accommodate those pedestrians and also uh, in the hopes of accommodating future development um, if, if there are other buildings on that site uh, that where you know, a walk-up window would be, would be welcome. But as far as the right-hand turn lane, it's not in my plans right now. It may come down to it needs to happen in the future, but it's not it's not on my immediate radar. I, I, you mentioned a walk up window, and I did not see that on the uh, on the plan. I just uh, possibly missed it. Could you 
show me where the walk-up window is? Sure, Jamal. Um, it is, do you see like in the, yeah, it's right, yep. Yeah. Nope, go a little bit to, yep, it's that's it, right there. So that's a little concrete pad. Um, we also, uh, Sean, did, are the photos available? They're on my laptop. So there is um, a building uh, that that is exactly like this that is already built and is operational it is the most efficient aroma Joe's they uh, this there are 65 aroma Joe's up and running um, Ashley Sydney is here from aroma Joe's and she certainly could speak more eloquently than I can about this but um, with every new building and every new plan uh, they get more and more and more efficient. So this is the most efficient design, and it has uh, a two drive-up windows on either side of the building. The one where you would enter is where you would place your order, and then you would drive around the building to pick up your order. And the reason that we do that is to allow for adequate queuing so that we can be really efficient with our throughput and make sure that we're getting cars in and out as expeditiously as possible. So the walk-up window, so South Sanford um, at 42 Jagger Mill Road in South Sanford, if you're just ever in the neighborhood and want to go through for a coffee, has that exact, um, that exact layout, and it's working really, really well. Thank you. Um, real quickly, uh, I, I have one more. I guess one more. One more comment. Then, um, now that you have that, with that walk-up window, you're mm -hmm. going to also have to consider some traffic calming because as people come around, that but curve they'll be stopping for to at the window to get their order. Uh, so, and there there is a walkway yeah. that's denoted as well. So, so people actually, when you say walk up, they drive their cars there, park their cars, and then walk up. You're well, not staff is staff is largely going to be doing that, but um, there is, um, there also we do do like many of the coffee franchises do, you know, boxes of coffee to go, that sort of thing. So if someone drives up to the to the order window and says. I want 10 coffees and six breakfast sandwiches and all that, chances are we're going to direct them to pull into one of those parking spots and ask them to walk up to the window in five minutes to get their order just so that we can keep traffic going because we are also very aware that th this is a busy intersection. We don't want to... And, and, and that makes a lot of sense right, in terms of efficiency and, and moving customers through. Yeah. My, I guess when you said walk up window, all of a sudden I had a vision of somebody walking along Saco road or county road and saying, oh, look, Aroma Joe's, I'm going to walk right across here, across the lanes of traffic and do a, a walk up uh, so that um, if you anticipate pedestrians right. actually crossing from the street or walking along the driveway and using it as a walk up that way, you're going to need to start to think about how you're going to handle safety issues for those pedestrians. So That's my understanding is that this is already an issue that the town is, in, in my discussions with Jamel and Jay, that there are already issues with, with pedestrians walking from Wasumski Springs Campground uh, to not only the um, convenience store, but also to Dunkin' Donuts and, and some of the other businesses in the area. And this is something that's already being addressed by the town. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Angela. Angela's been waiting to okay. jump in. Thanks. Yeah. Do you want to just grab a mic over here so we can all hear you? Here, just. And, um, and looking at doing some improvements in that area. And so right now that's a failing intersection. I know we had this conversation with the last applicant as well and looking at some um, additional um, amenities for um, upgrades to that traffic signal. So I think we're still gonna have to work with the applicant because they're obviously going to have a full traffic study and they're gonna be adding traffic to an already failing intersection. Um, but to address our concerns to start with is um, any way we can get, yes, people
people right in to that that um, corner lot, the better. That eliminates them going through that intersection. It's an added bonus. And to Rachel's point about, and their point with the structure in the way, I think it's really talking about this as a master plan concept. Um, as you mentioned, you need to figure out where the stormwater could go, where future buildings could go, because we should be talking about it now and saying, allowing for that right turn in and not discounting it as it'll come in the future, because I think that intersection needs help today. And so when you start adding those cars through there, I think it could be problematic. Those, it even changes where the cars that are already, I know they, they're probably talk in their um, application about pass-through traffic on County Road, but now you're gonna be adding a lot of rights to try to get into that and then lefts or rights back out of Saco Street. So there's a lot of changes going on there and to eliminate them going through the intersection is I think where we wanna head. Um, but as Rachel said, it's probably a bigger conversation that comes with traffic. I just don't want to discount it in the master plan. I think it should be part of that conversation now, too. Um, the other things were um, pedestrians. There are pedestrians, uh, quite a few, that come from the campground now. Um, so we are looking at any signal work we do is incorporating a pedestrian crossing of Saco and even County Road with um, any of the, the upgrades that we're proposing for that signal um, to get pedestrians around. So as to Rachel's point, we might wanna look at how that, that pedestrian connection from the intersection connects then back into the site rather than crossing Saco Street, which is a very heavy commuting um, traffic road. Um, and how you get to that walk-up window, I think is something that we can kind of flush out through the site plan review process, but it's something that really should be key. And um, the last thing I just wanted to add was, uh, it was mentioned about sidewalk easement, um, and the excessive, because 15 feet <laughs> seemed excessive. Um, part of it is also not knowing what we don't know as far as lane usage. Um, that corner is very tight, as you can see with the right of way, is essentially at the back of our curb line. So anything having to do with that pocket park, I'm a little cautious about just because we might say need to widen out Saco Street on that side. And so that was the talk, the conversation with the last applicant was looking at what if we needed to push out the lane on Saco, plus if we wanted to add an esplanade to add street trees, you know, plus the sidewalk, plus grading of that sidewalk to get to whatever amenities they had on their site. So that's where, um, Originally, well, I should say on the last approval, we had talked about 15 feet along Saco. I think he's right. I think County Road is pretty excessive to start with, so maybe 15 is overkill. So we could look at doing two different um, widths. Um, one, you know, if, if there needs to be a lesser one on County Road and still accommodate the things I just mentioned. Um, but we could flush that out as well. I just, we wanted to put it on the radar for, again, the master plan to discuss we would be interested in getting easements for sidewalks on both roadways, and as well as having more of a conversation about that park of park, so it's not, say, in the way of a mass harm in the future. Thank you, Angela. Uh, Rachel, do you want to kind of continue on? No, I'm, I'm so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask some clarifying questions yeah. real quick. So when we get into this master planning uh, process. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, when we mention a right turn into that property from County Road, right? So I, I can see that there's a longer term vision for this area of town that's starting to take shape. My question for staff is you know, I, I do want to safeguard, for, give some flexibility for any of those future discussions. However, how do we ask this applicant to plan? their current utility structures around something that may or may not develop down the road. Well, as far as the right in to go, it would be no different than showing future buildings and parking, and obviously as things get, will get moved around, that we have those conversations later on, but at least you have the intent of saying, well, we were, we're kind of looking at it as a holistic approach and, and showing maybe some sort of a right in to get to this, this future, I guess, development in the back. As far as the pocket park, just in general, I, was, I mean, if I look at where a right turn is going to go in, just 
logistically, I think it's right over where that house is, and then really where they've designated a stormwater area, future stormwater area. Well, Not that. Um, right, so what, as far as the plan set that we're looking at, are you asking for it to be penciled in or, I mean, you say you want it to be part of our discussion tonight. What is it you want to see? Another bubble says future p possible yeah. connection in. And it could be then fine tuned in a later submission. Mm. As as I see some, okay. I see some we're, nodding yeah, heads over there. We're fine with that. I mean, uh, that, that definitely, you know, I don't know what's going to be developed down the road there, but obviously people want to get to it, and the people that develop it, whether it's me or someone else, want people to be able to get to it. So sounds good to me. All those things are sort of shown conceptually on the plan that's anyway, and there's room, there's so room you've, to move those around. And but that's, that as part of your application here is acceptable to identify some sort of area like that along the that's property? That's fine. Yep. And okay. it can be part of the conversation to say, well, you're coming in in the future rebuilding, but then you can have a new relationship to the Roman Joe that that will want you to come in back around and how many things. You know what I mean? It's part of the conversation. So I'll say this. I mean, these are discussions that I've had with the engineer. Um, obviously, I need to drill a well. I need to put in septic. I need to allow for storm water. Um, I don't want to have to pay for it twice. So knowing that eventually the rest of that property is going to be developed, I'm going to put those things in a place that makes sense so that we're not, I'm not having to move them as we de further develop the, the property. So, so it, it to Angela's point, it, it does make perfect sense to think about where a right-hand turn would come in um, because any traffic, you know, we, I don't want going over my leach field, essentially. Um, so, you know, we're going to definitely plan smart so that, you know, I'm not wasting dollars having to redo something down the road. Thank you. I'll say, Angela? Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. All right. Um, I could hear you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, is that an existing water supply well that's there, that's shown on your plan? No. No. Okay. That's, so that's just a proposed, I wish. <laughs> right? That's just a proposed area? Yeah. Why, I guess, why, Sean, is there any specific reason, if you could go to the mic too to answer, is there any specific reason why it would be there? Do you have any hydrogeologic studies that have been done by previous applicants? No, not at this point, but it is in the aquifer protection overlay, so yeah, a pretty sandy area. I don't expect that we're going to have a okay. problem getting water. It's not a huge demand that we need out there. So, yeah. So um, okay. it was more just a matter of showing it on the plan at this point, so we included it. But okay. The, um, that would be great. And most of my comments are going to be around the aquifer protection overlay area in that um, we need to be very mindful of the concise two and a half, three pages of ordinances that are there. For example, and in fact, you need subsurface um, septic in that area. And I'll be looking specifically at the, the hydrologic analysis that is required for that. Not just the nitrate testing, but, but sort of where you're going to be putting it and what your recommendations might be for for future, for example, where you have the proposed Aroma Joe septic makes sense right now, but that could be part of where the bubble is for the write-in. I don't know. Um, the other thing is, you know, the, the, the other future septic is also part of where the other future write-in off Route 22 could be. So I guess I would recommend that we <clears throat> be a little more flexible with that I guess and I'm trying to remember that we're in master planning stage here too no I appreciate you okay. being as as, con as conscientious as possible so we can get as much done yeah a nitrate study will not be performed it won't okay. no nitrate study is only required if the septic is in in the TBC in this overlay 
aquifer protection zone, it's only if the septic will be larger than 12,000, I'm sorry, 1,200 gallons, and mm -hmm. I will not need a septic larger than 1,000 gallons. Okay. Um, I'll leave that up for you guys to handle the details on, on that with the town staff, but really look hard to it. You know, you're not going to be able to have floor drains that, that aren't connected to the septic, and that takes up space in the septic and the light. But also, um, two things. You also need, if you're going to have, for non-residential uses, um, think about um, a spill protection plan. And just because it's coffee doesn't mean that it can't potentially pollute the aquifer and you're already an impaired watershed there too. Sub, um, both you have subsurface protections, but also surface water protections that we th have to think about there. And the last applicant who was here also agreed to um, any stormwater um, galleries would, would have a lining to make sure that you know there was no percolation or infiltration from potential contaminants, like say from the parking lot into the aquifer um, subsurface area kind of a thing. So just something to think about there as far as long-term stormwater management is concerned and, and thinking about um, section four in the aquifer protection overlay regarding standards for stormwater management. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll get off my environmental soapbox and talk a little bit. Look at Sean. She never does. She never gets off that soapbox. Um, so let's talk about pedestrian crossings. Um, there's going to be a lot of, there, there, you're, you're correct, there is a lot of pedestrian demand in that area. And the fact that we're going to have a walk-up window, um, I'm worried about that exacerbation of that area. For example, um, if, if you're coming from Wasamki, Strain, Strain, um, Wasamki Springs, thank you, um, are, are we going to need like some type of crosswalk, you know, like pedestri pedestrian crosswalk or cross Saco Street, or did I miss it? Is it already in there? Thinking so about it's not in there. And, okay. and I, I will tell you that um, really the walk-up window, I was putting it in again because this is the exact plan that is currently being used in South Stamford, and it works really, really well. There, there's no pedestrian traffic in that area other than there's a garage behind that Aroma Joe's so the guys that work in the garage walk up to the walk-up window. Um, but we can decide that we're not going to utilize the walk-up window. We can say, nope, this is for f after future development. If a strip mall goes in there um, and there's a big parking lot and people want to walk across it, at that point, if, if the planning board says, you know what, this is just going to cause too much pedestrian traffic that's crossing Saco Street and, and creating an issue, we can just, I mean, build it in there and say that it will be utilized when the future development goes in. I, I'm fine with that. Right, um, let me just, let me just yeah. ask a question back to staff about complete streets. Is this part of a complete streets pro, you know, project area? And is, you know, sort of cro sidewalks, crosswalks part of the larger plan? Will they be paying an impact fee toward that kind of a thing? Or do we need to be thinking about this now as part of the master planning process? Well, our, our project is, you know, rooted in complete streets. We're, we're looking at where this is a TDC zone. I think that's where we have to start from, is looking at, like, as Nick started, we're kind of reshaping this mm -hmm. back to a neighborhood. And mm -hmm. No, they don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm of the camp that I would like the sidewalk going down from the campground eventually, mm -hmm. um, and then crossing at the intersection is, is my goal. It's part 
Okay. So is this an area where, and I apologize, I don't have all the impact fee sort of areas memorized or anything like that. Will there be impact fees associated with this? Typically the sidewalk, uh, when we talk about like a fee for sidewalk, mm -hmm. it's a planning board decision that's okay. that is brought to you guys to decide whether or not the applicant should be putting in sidewalks or paying for future sidewalks. Okay. All right. So is that something we have to decide on tonight or just bring it up? I think that's more of a site plan Good. Uh, conversation because we'll have the traffic and the full traffic analysis. And are you guys uh, required to submit a traffic movement permit? Yes. So yeah, they still have. Okay. There's some work to be done with. The Unless traffic. you just want to like say we don't have to do it. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't no. think I have that power. I don't. Yeah, over DOT probably not. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I think you addressed both the historic building and the mini park and. Uh, the 12 foot buffer, I think, is what. Did, did we fully address that? Do you feel like, Jamel, you have the direction that you need on the 12 foot? Okay, sir. I guess I've spoken my piece. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Robin. Rick. Are you all? Hey, thank you. Don't get the echo. Um, I want to start by, and mentioned it last time, but if anybody in the room and are in the TV audience, I am actually the director of Butter to this property. So just for the record, I live next door. Um, I do like Roman Joe's. I think they are very efficient, and the coffee's good. I think I'm allowed to give you a plug since we're on TV. <laughs> um, oh, I do have, I do, unfortunately, I've, I have had to wait my turn. But the right hand only turn, the right, the turn off a 22, I do have some concerns there for a couple reasons. One, we've told a number of people in the last three years I've been on this board that if you're abut two roads, you have to come off the least travel road. Um, and I understand this is a, a somewhat of a special case because this intersection is um, very busy. But that intersection, because it's so busy, um, a right-hand turn lane could Onto, so onto County Road, I could just see it creating a couple problems because I see that intersection every day. If I had got, if you, if you come through, if you're coming down 22 and you want to get to Wasomsky Springs and there's an opening there and traffic backs up from Buxton through that intersection to Smiley Hills Farm. So as soon as you get within 100 feet of that intersection, if you see a right hand only turn, there's a very high likelihood that someone would take that right-hand turn and cut right through that parking lot, right over that sidewalk that goes to the walk-up window, if, if you have a walk-up window. Um, I've seen motorcycles cut through that field. Mm-hmm, street, street, street bikes, right through that field and out the other side. So you put tar there and an opening, and it could get really interesting. The other thing is Saco Street in the morning will back up past Libby Road. Uh, I mean, I've never, I can only see it past Barb's house, but I would imagine it's almost back to the hamlet. And if you know you can grab a coffee at Aroma Joe's and then get right out on 22, there's a chance someone might try that too. Um, I could definitely see that. That cuts off about 30 cars in the morning, and you get a coffee. So um, it might be good for the coffee business. But <laughs> um, so you know, I know it's just a proposal right now, but to, to make the applicant do it um, doesn't really make a lot of sense to me because I think we're creating a problem that is going to be would be hard to fix um, in the future. Um, so that's on the right hand turn only as, as far as the master plan and the layout, um, I think it, sorry, I think it looks fine. Um, as Robin pointed out, it is an aquifer overlay zone. So, uh, as far as the aroma Joe's doesn't have a, have, it has some, the more impervious surface you have, the, the better your, your 
stormwater system or your bigger stormwater system has to be. So um, I would keep that in mind just because aquifer overlays on the stormwater systems can get fairly expensive fairly quick. Um, and then, um, yeah, I think that's about it. I mean, as far as the, all, the, all the future stuff, you know, I, we obviously, I, I'm, I'm glad to see you put it in there, mm -hmm. but obviously um, that would all need to be evaluated at a later date. Um, I think that's about it. The only other thing that I might note for the, for your, um, for the, for the, I don't know if it's really staff, maybe the engineer, um, the, the other applicant that was before the board before for this same lot put the stormwater in the back of the lot, and I don't know if there was a, a technical reason for that. It was, um, I, I know the water does run that way, uh, the, the water does run across the lot from the front, if you're facing it, the front left corner to the front, to the back right corner, the water naturally runs that way, so I don't know if very flat. that, yeah, it, it is very flat, but it does, if you, when you get the tope map, um, you'll, you, you'll see it runs a little bit that way. Um, their design was for, if you're going to speak, could you just, you know. yeah, that, I, I looked at that site plan and it was obviously a lot bigger, a lot more impervious area, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, for this, for the initial phase. Our goal for the, for just this first phase for the Aroma Joes is trying to keep everything right up close to that so we're not impacting the other site um yeah future development yeah there may may require something there in the very right. back um, right but we're going to try and keep everything up close to yeah i think you did a really good job i think it looks nice um yep other than the the you know the right hand turn i think the rest of it's fine and the right hand turn's not on here but i know we were discussing it a lot and and you know potentially asking them to put it on here and I just don't um, at that intersection at this time I just don't know if it's a good idea I think after we make the improvements to that intersection in the future it, it, it might work but that's all I have thanks Rick. Roger. Um, I think uh, I think Rick makes some good points about that that turn that right turn um, because as he was speaking, I was thinking about the, um, the service station up here at Oak Hill. And, you know, um, I'm just thinking cars heading, I think, east on 22. All of a sudden they realize, I want a, I want a coffee. They may try and get into that right turn, you know, try and go mm -hmm. in the wrong way, just like they do down at Holy Donut. You know, mm -hmm. they, they pass it, then they realize, oh, I want to get in there, and then they, they take a right in where they shouldn't be, you know, the cars heading north. So I think, I think Rick raises some very good points on that. Um, how far is Wazomsky Springs from where this main entrance is? Do you have any idea? Do we, I mean, people walk from there? This Could, is what I'm told. Because I that's know. quite a ways in off, off of um, Saco Road too, right? Saco yeah, Street. I'm not that familiar. Yeah. I think it's right across the line. Yeah. It's it probably if you're a camper, I, I would say it's probably a 10 minute walk. Okay. I will point out that they're mostly going to the convenience store because the convenience store sells alcohol, which Aroma Joe's does not. <laughs> uh, and right now, uh, Angela, there's no sidewalks out there anywhere. Is that correct? Uh, I don't believe so. So if people were to walk. Mm -hmm. Once they get into your entryway, right. they would be basically walking right on the paved portion. They'd be... They, they would. I, I mean, obviously, if there was a crosswalk that was put um, across Saco Street, maybe tw right into that mini park, I would, um, you know, I, I could see putting in some striping to kind of direct them, to keep them off of the, the line of traffic. There is... Um, that there's there's enough room in the proposed pavement for for there to be two uh, lanes of traffic um, in case somebody decides that they 
don't want a coffee after all, um, which no one will. But, um, you know, obviously we need to accommodate a ladder truck as well. So that's why it's a little bit wider than it needs to be just to suit our purposes. I, I, I don't have anything further, I guess, at this point. I, I mean, I'd like to, I, I hope this all gets built out the way you envision it in the future. Me too. And, um, <laughs> You know, being a TVC zone, I mean, it's going to be kind of interesting. Hopefully, it's going to develop nicely with sidewalks. And if I'm not mistaken, TVC also allows on-street parking. Is that correct? So I don't know if anybody's mentioned that to you. <laughs> um, so I'm all, I guess I'm all set at this point. Thank you, Roger. Jen? I apologize for being late. Sorry about that. Um, I... I'm glad that you pointed out the um, the walk-up window because that wasn't um, apparent to me. But I think it's great that you're considering adding that here. I think it's good that it's working for you in other um, in other communities, and that if it encourages even a single um, person to, you know, if you're looking at the, the master plan build out of the site and at, like you pointed out, if someone else is doing business at one of these other um, buildings and decides because there's an inviting way to get there that maybe they don't need to drive in their car the 200 feet to get a coffee. Right. I, I think that's really, um, that's great. I know that, that your business model, ten, that business model tends to be very vehicle centric and so I think adding that um, is forward thinking of you, and I think it'll be a good addition here, uh, especially in light of, of the um, apparent, you know, pedestrian activity, even if seasonal in this area. Um, and so, you know, I ec echo what some others have said here, um, but would also encourage you to think about how that part of your business um, might interact with the other infrastructure around you and not just the parking spaces that you're providing on your site, like you were talking about for, you know, someone pulling up for a large order, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but as others have mentioned, how that might orient or connect in with other, um, other parts of the public infrastructure. And I think, you know, I think there are, if done right, I think it's, um, it's certainly possible. So landscaping, you mentioned, you know, that's people are drawn to sort of human scale things, picnic tables, plantings, um, things like that. And I do think with, um, you know, with the right, the right thought, and if it's a priority to you, that I think that um, that could be a real asset to this property and this neighborhood in general. Um, so I would just encourage you to work, work towards doing that. Um, I will also speak in favor of the uh, the 15 foot wide easement in particular along um, Saco Street or really at that corner in general um, for all the reasons mentioned thus far in addition to um, the need for in, in particular any grading or future um, ADA compliant ramps which could which could sort of also work into, you know, connecting pedestrians to your site. That can be, um, I, this is something that I deal with a lot during the day and this pinch point was just an immediate red flag to me. Um, and so if there was the opportunity for either, um, you know, you and the town to work together or at least you in thinking about your development for the site to consider that that there may be a need for some more public space there for signal equipment, ramps, sidewalks, what, what have you, um, in particular on that, that corner, which is very tight. Um, and then the, the question about the complete streets policy and whether or not this um, you know, fits in with that, I, I like to think that all of our streets should be complete streets, but that that doesn't necessarily mean every street in Scarborough needs sidewalks on both sides and bike lanes and you know sort of the works. So I just think that um, you know being uh, being thoughtful to the context here will go a long way. And I think um, in addition to that benefiting the public, I think it's only. Um, you know, it would it would work in your favor as well. If you're the more people that you are inviting to um, come in and patronize your business, the better, I would think. Um, and just when you're at the master planning level, to to devote some space to that um, 
I think will be good. Um, so I'll say that there's, it, it appears, although I'm due for a new eye exam, and that there are seven parking spots um, right now. And I'll say that um, there will probably only be need for, at the most, three staff parking spots. So, um, you know, for there to be four or potentially even five um, parking spots for people who say want to, um, you know, just not sit, it's a nice day, they want to walk up to the window, that, that sort of thing. So there, there will be parking to accommodate those people. Um, but I will also mention that we will close the walk-up window after dark for safety reasons for staff. Sure, that makes sense, yeah. Um, and then the write-in access, I, so I'm relatively new to the board here, um, but definitely not new <laughs> to write-in access. Points. Um, and so, you know, I know that those conversations have, have been happening here for quite some time, but also understand, you know, a failing intersection um, and that, you know, I think thinking about how that might integrate in your site, again, would be beneficial to the well-being of the intersection, but also to your business, you know, as, as I'm not as familiar with this intersection, obviously, as someone like Rick is, but you know, I can't help but think that if, if um, again, if done right, and I don't know what types of businesses, if you've even thought that far, that you would entertain for your master build out, but um, if you can catch someone, not, that's not the right word, not the right phrase, but you know, if you were to, if you were to have um, businesses there that were sort of intercepting, you know, people, so that it's not cut through traffic, they're coming to your business and then they're leaving in another way. That's all I'm trying to say. Sure. Um, that it might help mitigate some of that, that cut through traffic that does tend to be sort of high speed or otherwise um, undesirable, but could be a good way of, of diverting any trips through that intersection that are ultimately destined for your site. Um, I think other than that, I'm all set. Thank you. Rick? Yeah, I don't really have anything else. Everything's been pretty much covered. I think the applicant here has uh, demonstrated, you know, thinking about this in a, from a 50,000-foot uh, level at this point, and we'll see more detail as it goes through and eventually has uh, the aroma of coffee coming out of it. Um, so I look forward to seeing it at uh, the next phase. Thanks. Thank you, Rick. So I'm, I'm just going to piggyback on a couple of items that throughout the night we've discussed. Um, when you get to the historical building aspect of this, I just, um, Rachel, I think, kind of touched on this a little bit, but with the previous applicant, I believe uh, what was asked of them ultimately was that they, if they ever got to the point where they wanted to demolish it or needed to demolish it, that they put it on, um, they advertise it for 30 days for free um, for anyone to come and take it away um, as a way to maybe preserve it. And then after that, they were allowed to demo and then use those field stones, that foundation, um, mm -hmm. somehow incorporate them onto the property. Um, with your intention to ultimately try to keep the building, um, I guess my question for you would be, um, I noticed in the mini park, which is kind of a hot topic as far as traffic goes, you know, it's this rock and plaque, but it's, it's kind of away from the building. And um, I live, I go through this area quite a bit. so. Um, do I. Yeah, very, very challenging. I know it's a very challenging intersection. It's a very mm -hmm. challenging roadway. Um, and for the longest time, I drive, drove by that house, and I was like, "Why has no one torn this thing down?" Um, because it's not. I mean, it is about to fall over in the next stiff breeze. Yeah. Why wouldn't you think about putting a sign? And I know this is definitely not necessary for this discussion, but right. just in general, if you're going to identify that it's an old historical building, I would think nearer to the building the better. So. When you, when you do drive by, you're like, oh, that's what that is, <laughs> instead of, yeah. like, how is that still standing? That's, but, a, that's a great question. I don't currently own the house. Right. I'm under contract to purchase it, and, and just, that definitely will be something that I will plan to do. Um, it was just a thought. It, it, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's more of an eyesore. It's really a shame because um, it is a historic monument to the town of Scarborough. Um, so it's a, it's a shame that it's in the condition that it's in. I, 
it's probably beyond saving at this point. Um, but certainly, I, I want the project that I'm proposing is a really pretty project. That house is not pretty, so I will do what I can to make it look a little bit nicer until, you know, right now it's not interfering with my project and it's just added expense to tear it down and I'm, I'm just feeling, planning to leave it as it is. Just the only reason I mentioned it was because you were going to pay homage to it on that corner and I was saying... Well, well the homage is already being paid. Right. So the, the tree was planted in honor of Ralph Thames. There is a plaque that's in front of that tree. Um, that's that's I, that, existing. Okay. I that, did, um, I yeah, so that. and Sorry. if the road is widened, I, I'm assuming that that plaque will have to move and the tree will have to be cut down but that's, that's my fault i misunderstood yeah. i thought that was being proposed rather than no it it's already there okay um thank you so uh i'm going to piggyback on uh, some of rick's concerns here on the right in on the property and i know staff you're always looking forward is just so prime for cutting through mm -hmm. that traffic is brutal um at night which is going to be great for a coffee business i'm sure um having a long lines people waiting um, however um, I think while we can I think can try to incorporate into a master conceptual plan down the road I think the traffic is gonna, the traffic studies when we ever we get to that point are going to tell us everything we need to know about whether that's a really wise decision or not so but just to note it is a concern of mine um, and then um, <clears throat> as far as um, sidewalks and things as you go forward you know actually could be a really positive for that intersection to get some of that more pedestrian walkways incorporated. You do see people scampering across, you know, dodging cars to, to get to the various convenience stores in the area. So um, this just adds another attraction for them to try to get to. And um, whether it's, uh, you know, put into an intermodal account or uh, we decide ultimately that sidewalks are the way to go because we've hit that point in development, you know, uh, look forward to seeing something like that out there. Um, <clears throat> outside of that, we do have a motion. Mind if I just jump in? Oh, yes, absolutely. So, as the board thinks about the right in access, obviously a traffic study will be needed to fully vet out whether it's a good option or not. Um, but I just, you know, the board's really charged with um, reviewing projects on a case by case basis um, and not whether you've allowed one in the past or not. Um, it's, you're looking at this project right now and whether it would make sense. Um, for this project, um, maybe not another one that may be in the audience right now. Um, so as you think about that, we have put a condition um, on the motion just saying, you know, if this was to be on the plan, it would be a potential right in access. It wouldn't lock it in. Um, but if a traffic study comes in during site plan that says the site would really benefit or the intersection would really benefit, it may be a good idea to have it on the master plan so they can plan around it in the future. And, I'll leave it at that. I think that's fair. <clears throat> um, there's no need to necessarily tie our hands this early in the process, and certainly a lot more information that we need to get our hands on before we, we even cross that bridge. So, uh, That said, we have uh, something prepared here tonight. <clears throat> I'd be happy to clear my throat sorry. <clears throat> and dive in. I move to approve the conceptual master plan titled Roma Joe's proposed by and Child Enterprises LLC, as depicted on the plan set prepared by CES Inc., dated 42619, with the following findings and conditions. Findings. Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the conceptual master plan is consistent with the site inventory and analysis and reflects a reasonable utilization of the site given both the environmental and built environment considerations. Conceptual master plan is also consistent with the space and bulk standards, the development standards, and other requirements for plan developments in the TVC2 zoning district. Conditions. One, the applicant shall revise the conceptual master plan to include A, a plan note stating that the required 10-foot wide green buffer strip along the county road frontage is maintained. B, a plan note indicating a potential right and only entrance along the county road frontage as discussed with the planning board. Two, the site plan during site plan review, the final location of all utilities, driveway location, parking, sidewalk easements along county road and soccer street will be determined. Three, the applicant shall address the remaining staff review comments in the memo dated 5-2019. These revisions shall be incorporated into the formal site plan application to the planning board. Then I have a motion. Second. second. And motion is second. Any discuss? And just for the record, we have Jen is 
back. So Rick, you are now alternate again. Um, Jen will be voting on this. All right. All in favor? Oh, can we oh I'm sorry. Discussion? Yes, I'm sorry. I, um, I just want clarification that we aren't seeking the 15-foot sidewalk easement. That we are not, or we are did not. We did not um, put a number to it, okay. and I think based on the discussion that was had here tonight, it seems like the applicants were very willing to discuss with town what the appropriate dimensions of that would be. Okay. But I think we're leaving it open for them Thank to you. kind of nail that nail that down a little bit. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Any other discussion on this? All in favor? Show those unanimous. Good luck. Next item is uh, Pat Co. Construction, Inc. Request a site plan review for 238 Gorham Road, Assessor's Map R38, Lot 27. Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project is located along Gorham Road in the B2 zoning district, uh, close to the Payne Road intersection. So the applicant was last before the board in April, um, and they're proposing to construct an 8,000 square foot Napa Auto Parts building uh, that will include retail sales and warehousing. Uh, so the applicant has provided some building elevations for the board to consider. It appears that the rear and westerly elevations include uh, blank walls. In order to meet the design standards, uh, staff has recommended that the applicant provide fenestration along these elevations. Um, so the board should be sure to provide uh, direction uh, to the applicant and staff on this element. The applicant has also requested a waiver from the driveway separation standard given the difficult orientation of the site. This was discussed uh, the last two hearings with the board, uh, so the board should consider the appropriateness of this waiver request. The zoning ordinance does require a 15-foot landscape buffer along the Gorham Road frontage to separate the development from the street and to enhance the visual environment. There appears to be an opportunity to provide additional plannings within the buffer. However, the applicant is also proposing a stormwater swale and under drain within the buffer as well. Uh, the board will need to provide guidance uh, to the applicant and staff on whether you are comfortable with the design as proposed and whether it meets the intent of the zoning standard. I'll now uh, ask Angela to address some of the stormwater comments in the buffer. Thank you, Angela. And um, just before we jump right into it, I get a quick follow up to that question. Um, are there ways to take care of the stormwater and address the buffering that may be other solutions that exist that might be different than what's being offered by the applicant? To kind of Thanks. 
sounds like we've, we've provided you what your intro to us will be tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you, Angela and Jamal. Uh, before you jump in real quick, Roger. With that, thank you. Craig Burgess with Sebago Technics here tonight representing PACGO Construction. So as Jamel mentioned, we've been in front of the board now three times, uh, the last one being in April, and since then we've worked to address the town comments, and just recently we, we received additional comments, which I believe are fairly minor in nature, and the applicant PACGO Construction is willing to work with the town on those comments. We don't see any real issues there. And tonight we're really looking for final approval of this project so that we can move forward with the construction. Specifically addressing the stormwater um, along that front swell with the landscaping. One of the comments did talk about the landscaping. We removed some snow storage areas. Although we didn't specifically put plants where the snow storage areas were shown, we did increase uh, the buffer. We made it a little bit more dense along Gorham Road. So rather than put plants right up against the parking, instead we pushed that we pushed the plantings a little bit closer to Gorham Road and just made that buffer a little bit more dense. Um, the runoff from the pavement's draining mainly as sheet flow toward that, that ditch to drain to a soil filter. There aren't many options of treating the storm water here just because of we're up against elevations and with the soil filter, which really has about a two and a half foot section, we were pressed to make that work. So the only other real options are, are a tree filter maybe, but that isn't the best option for really providing the stormwater treatment that you'll see through a soil filter as the water goes through the sand layer. Um, some of the other comments around, we did provide landscaping around the building to the rear and to the west facing Shaw's, and so tonight we're looking to the board to comment on the landscaping because staff did request additional plantings there. Paco Construction has really taken this site, which is now developed with very minimal landscaping and really making it a nice project. So tonight we're looking for some feedback from you on the landscaping and the stormwater. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Jen, do you want to start off here? Um, I'll start by turning my mic on. I'm curious if you could just speak a little bit bec because of the staff's questions about the landscape <coughs> plantings and their proximity to these stormwater features about how, um, so I'm, you know, I'm familiar with what a five to six foot high plant is, but maybe what some of the root structures or, or any other um, impacts might be from the plantings that you're proposing along there and or how they would relate vertically to what you're proposing for stormwater. Does that make sense? Sure. So we didn't want to put any trees with a significant root structure in the soil filter bottom. Some of the trees along, along what the space that we had along Gorham Road, we tried to make that as much of a robust buffer as possible. And working towards the soil filter, I believe there are uh, small shrubs closer to there. And then toward the embankment, there are some larger trees down um, at the south end of the site. There are some larger trees there. As long as the trees aren't in the immediate soil filter footprint, I'm not concerned there. But over time, we will have to just keep an eye for the overall annual maintenance on that to make sure that, that the root structures aren't causing any uh, failure along that embankment. Okay, um, and then um, the only other question that I have was why, why not, um, why not any plantings on the west side <coughs> closest to Shaw's, the Shaw's side? Well, 
there's not much landscape in there today and we really needed to provide some room for snow storage on the site we've really provided a lot of landscaping to the point where we there's little to no room for snow storage and there are some trees you can see here there are some trees on the Shaw side which will provide some form of a buffer existing trees yeah, you mean? yeah. okay those are my biggest questions thank you Robin Uh, what watershed are we in? The Nunsuch Brook. It's not in Red Brook? Darn. <laughs> um, did you talk with, uh, how close are you to Shaw's and their stormwater system? Where, if you're looking at the plan there, to the left is the, an overflow parking area. Okay. So did you explore any, any opportunity for shared stormwater systems between the two? Shaw's is a corporation and trying to negotiate with them would be very difficult. There is a large wet pond if down below to the south. Mm. Um, it's overgrown and really not, maybe it's functioning exactly. as intended, but it's hard to tell. <laughs> it's probably not functioning very well. So, um, and I understand that, um, I don't know, somewhere in our ordinances it talks about, you know, shared systems and things like that shall be made. Um, I guess, what's the, what's the slope, or what's the grade difference coming off Gorham Road down to like the parking area? It's only a few feet, right? Yeah, it's not gonna be a drastic change from what's out there today, uh, just a couple feet. So are you drastic, with this swale, are you drastically changing the existing hydrology? Not Right now, the, it, the parking lot along Gorham Road drains to uh, two catch basins that really have no outlet. So we couldn't find where the storm drain outlet is, but if there was at some point when this project was first developed, I believe it's now plugged and it's not functioning as intended. So I believe those either seep into the ground below or they overflow and go drain south towards the, south, the uh, storage facility. Mm. Is it like a dry well? Is it acting like a dry well, it's, those it's, cash basins? It's hard to tell. What would happen if, uh, well, is, is Napa going to need to, mm, I'm just thinking of spill <coughs> controls and, and the like kind of a thing and knowing that Section G of the site plan review about stormwater says that the water quality of receiving water shall not be degraded by stormwater runoff. Um, so, so the existing site currently receives no, no treatment. It drains to catch basins, which I believe are clogged, have never really been maintained. And so we haven't done any investigation of what no, is I've, there? I, we have. It's, okay. just, it's just hard to tell with the brush that's there, the steep riprap slope toward the back of the site. Yeah, and I, I understand sort of Angela not asking, you know, sort of answering the questions directly because we don't want to dictate the means and methods of this project kind of thing, but um, oh, it, it really, it's just screaming for some creativity and I was hoping that we had like a compensation <laughs> fee utilization plan or something like that in in the, I was hoping it was in the Redbrook watershed. Um, <laughs> so we could do something really creative because this is, um, have you thought about um, talking to any folks about proprietary um, um, stormwater features? Um, I'm not gonna name sort of like any of the items kind of a thing, but, and putting it underground and doing some type of low impact development that would incor incorporate something other than those standard DEP BMPs? So the, we don't really have a lot of elevation differential to really explore a, a closed storm drain system or like a tree filter, which would have an invert down at three and a half feet. At that point, we would be up against some challenges to try to find a place for, to discharge that. So that's why we went with a very shallow swale along Gorham Road to a soil filter which has a two and a half foot buildup. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I, I don't envy your task. And I, I guess I want to just take a pass for now and just think while my uh, peers ask more questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Rob. Rachel? Yeah, let, uh, shifting just a little bit here. Um, I'll get back to the landscaping at some point. But um, the one of the observations was that you had the front of the building for the, the delivery trucks. Have you reconsidered that? Or is that so that that front of the building, uh, the parking is going to be for the for patrons? Certainly, we can shift we can shift the parking over so that the closer park parking to the main entry is for patrons. We All right, can, I think I, I think that would be appropriate. Uh, I think um, changing from uh, an overhead door to the doors that you've proposed is genius. It's a way to uh, get a, a truck up there and uh, the truck loaded uh, without having us look at you and say, but that's an overhead garage door, which you can't have facing yeah. the street. Uh, so instead, you've come up with a solution that I think adds to the adds to the building, uh, and um, I, I commend you for for coming up with something like that. Uh, the staff did note that the building, the two of the walls are blank. I should note that uh, under the ordinances, any any building that has more than a hundred foot run of a blank wall actually must have uh, windows. Okay. So that's the back. So uh, we need to see some windows in the back. Um, people in the past have just put some sort of a black screen in back of them so they don't actually look out. But uh, it, you might want to just actually have more light into that, that building area. And also windows on the blank side facing shores. And the applicant is willing to work with the town staff if we can get approval tonight to meet those standards. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, I have, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this and this, there's only two areas of storage, snow storage. And I was thinking when uh, Jen was asking about the buffering between Shores and uh, Patco, that that she was considering, and if she wasn't, then I am, what uh, possible landscaping in that blank wall area. You had said that was snow storage, but you have not listed that as snow storage, I believe, but maybe I, was, maybe I heard you wrong. Down at the bottom of that plan? Yeah. Is that the area? So we, we, we could add landscape in there if that's what the board wants to see. There is a level spreader there, so I just don't want to compromise that at, at all but we could if, if you'd like to see put something if you're not going to use it for for uh, snow storage then perhaps something that um, kind of some beds that parallel the uh, the driveway area okay just simply uh, in, a, in a way to cut off that site you're not going to be using it doesn't look so yeah. adding that um, And actually, I am I'm comfortable with what you have along the front. It's a very difficult building. It's a very difficult lot. Uh, you've added significantly to what's been there, uh, and you've improved significantly on what has been there in terms of uh, the visuals of of the lot and the building and and the use. So I uh, I'm comfortable um, with what you have. Thank you. Thank you. Rick. Yeah, I commend you on your um, efforts on this project because it is a very challenging site. Um, but it's going to look, I think it's going to look much better what we've, than what we've had there in the past. Um, as far as snow storage, you, I think you mentioned one time if, if this, because of the limited snow storage, you're going to haul snow if you have if to. It ever, if it ever becomes an issue, yes. Okay. Because I like to see snow, you know, pushed into, into the nice landscaping that you're going to do. And then um, I guess I really only had one question when I was looking over all this information was, and I think we've talked about this before, so maybe you just need to refresh my memory, as to why the handicapped spaces are where they are. Is that? that that's the side of the, that's where the main entry is going to be. Okay. 
okay. at so that they, corner. All right, I thought I was, I think I may have been confused on where the entrance was, so. Um, okay, yeah, now that I'm picturing it in my mind how, how, the, how the Napa looks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, other than that, um, I think everybody else has already asked my question, so. Thank you, Rick. Roger. Uh, I really don't have much uh, to ask other than uh, I guess you're going to address the the, uh, the sides of the building, you know, westerly and the um, the side of the building facing that storage. You know, you're going to dress up the sides of the building, you know, according to the de design standards and put in some sort of uh, buffering and things like that. Um, and I, you're asking for a waiver too, right? Yes, the entrance, I am. and I have no problem that, with that. Um, so, I think everything else has been discussed. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. Jen, uh, Jim, we started with you. Uh, so we'll go over to Rick. Um, yeah, I think the waiver is appropriate for this challenging spot, and I'm glad uh, it was mentioned about putting some fake windows or you know, actually even one extra light in there. But on the rear and the side where it's abutting those other properties, um, it's nice. We have standards and and um, guidance, and we should be using those. And I'd like to see something on those blank walls. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. So um, <clears throat> not quite sure. I Kind of getting a sense that people are okay with what's being proposed, at least along Gorham, uh, Gorham Road. Um, you know, and for what it's worth, if anyone ever asked me whether the stormwater treatment was more important or the uh, kind of the buffering requirements, um, you know, put me down for the stormwater side of it every time. I'm, I love to make things look great in this town. However, you know, there's a kind of a, a functionality that really needs to take precedent, um, in my mind at least. Uh, when it comes to these types of things, so um, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the um, the anything else in here that you need discussed? Because if if there's something the staff has mentioned in in this feedback that you need changed, now would be the time to have us discuss it. Um, if you're willing to work with staff on all of the requirements that they've they've outlined to you in their comments. Yeah. If, if, if we're going to dress up the rear of the building a little bit, will the board require more plantings back there? <coughs> you know, my, yeah, my thoughts on this, just in general, you know, how, mu how much plantings can you really get back there? Um, <coughs> so, personally, I'm, I'm not imposed. Uh, I mean, I don't feel like we need to really make that as robust, um, but I do think you should break up the back of that facet. You know, okay. if so, that's my two cents. Anyone else on the board can... Yeah, I, I think what you what you have there, the uh, Canadian hemlocks, I believe they are. Yeah, I think that's adequate in terms of the planting. I, I would just add a little more on the uh, side closest to shores. Okay. Mr. Chair, I just have yes, Robert. Found in the ordinance, it is G8. In the site plan review ordinance, it says wherever feasible drainage basins shall be designed to be shared between abutting properties lessen the amount of land area devoted to stormwater management. So I know it's late in the game to think about this, but I guess as far as you know, stormwater is concerned in these, in these instances, I think it is important to explore the feasibility of this option um, moving forward. What's, what's important to note about that is that pond that's constructed back there may not meet the latest requirements per DEP. And, and to me, that's precisely the reason why we would that would be a good site to constant Im improvement in our community. Thanks. I'm going to quickly look at Angela real quick to see if you had looked at kind of the standard previously with the applicant or as part of this application or Jamel even um, if either anyone on staff has kind of looked at that.
Yeah, I and just to follow up real quick, as I think you know, think this out because I mean, just kind of came up, but you know, I think asking the applicant to maybe look at shared space earlier in the process is exactly. is really appropriate. Um, and that's exactly what I'm saying is for yeah, future reference and future I think we projects. Have to, um, because yeah. I think at this stage to ask um, ask an applicant to go on somebody else's property with someone else's stormwater system and try to make an agreement to improve it all is, is really too tall of an order. So, yes. Yes. What's the question? Sorry. The pond that we're talking about this. I would have to know where the pond is located yeah, to okay. answer your question. So, but you, you think it's... Um, I don't know. I think the indication was it might be related to Stod Shaw's you know, stormwater okay. management system. To be honest, I haven't really hmm. dug into that, so I don't have an so. answer. Yeah. All right. So I think we're sidetracking ourselves a little bit here, but um, all good things to think about for going forward for other applications. So uh, that said, I have a motion here um, prepared with some modifications to the original language and we seem to be okay on. Yes? Correct. I move to approve the site plan amendment project titled Napa Auto Parts proposed Thank by you. Patco Construction Inc. as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics dated 5619 with the following findings, waivers and conditions. Findings, the applicant is proposing to demolish the existing buildings on the property and construct an 8,000 square foot retail sales and warehousing building with associated landscaping, parking, utilities, and stormwater management elements. The property will utilize existing frontage on Gorham Road. The property is located within the regional business B2 zoning district and is identified in the town of Scarborough tax maps as map R38, lot 15. Planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses site plan review and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movements, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater <coughs> management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Waivers, one, permit the location of the proposed driveway along Gorham Road given the challenging nature of this property. Conditions, one, Prior to the issuance of the building permit, the applicant shall revise the plan set to include A, provide fenestration elements along the rear and westerly building elevations as discussed with the planning board. B, additional plantings along the westerly property lines for screening purposes. C, provide a plan note indicating when the site's light fixtures need to be dimmed. D, remove the plan note on the site plan that depicting the location of the proposed overhead door. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Two, prior to the issuance of the building permit, the applicant shall A, pay the traffic impact fees, B, pay the in lieu fee in the amount equal to the estimated construction of a sidewalk along the Highest Parkway frontage. I should say Gorham Road, sorry. I would think so. <laughs> Strike that, please. Gorham Road frontage. <laughs> Funds are to be directed to the town's multimodal reserve account. This shall be rev reviewed and approved by the planning department. Three, prior to the issuance of a sign permit, the applicant shall submit a final signage plan. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Four, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. That is the motion. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? I show that to be unanimous. Good Thank luck. you. Next item on the agenda, Hospice of Southern Maine requests a site plan review for 11 Lincoln Avenue, Assessor's Map R62, Lot 29B. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project's located in the B3 uh, zoning district located uh, behind the Holy Donuts. So the applicant was granted master plan approval in, by the board in early February, and they're proposing a 14,550 square foot single story building that will serve as the main office for clinical and administration, administrative staff. The applicant is also proposing two ground-mounted solar arrays and a geothermal wheel, well field that will serve the building. As the board may recall, the principal review element um, during the master plan review was the proposed access to the site. Uh, so the applicant's proposing a 20-foot wide entrance-only driveway along Route 1 
you know, the town's traffic consultant has recommended that the maximum width for this driveway should be 16 feet, uh, given that it's one way. Staff has also recommended that the app applicant consider striping two foot wide shoulders within the throat of the 16 foot wide driveway to further uh, help notify motorists. Staff also recommends that the applicant provide details of the proposed signage associated with the entrance only driveway along Route 1. Staff has, has identified an opportunity to provide additional plantings in the required 15 foot uh, landscape buffer along Route 1. The applicant's proposing a total of 84 parking spaces. Uh, given the amount of new impervious surfaces on the property, uh, staff recommends that the applicant reduce the amount of parking on the site uh, to the required 58 spaces. Um, so the applicant should discuss that with the board. And staff would also like to point out that the, that the proposed solar arrays on the property will need to meet the standards uh, set forth in the zoning ordinance. Um, there's a section in the performance standards that needs to be met. And finally, the applicant should provide the board with an update on their um, required main DEP permit. And that's it for now. Thank you, Jamel. Um, so with that, we'll turn it over to you, as he, Jamel stated. Uh, if we can just, since we have seen this multiple times, uh, let's try to keep it to your bigger elements that you really kind of need some guidance here from the planning board or action on. And any other items that they've mentioned in their staff comments that you want to have uh, the planning board talk about a little bit more. Thank Will do. Thank you, Jamel. Uh, my name is Andy Johnson. I am a principal and civil engineer with Atlantic Resource Consultants and very pleased to be representing Hospice of Southern Maine with this project. Um, as the chair just said, I will leave the, the usual introductions of the project because I'm sure most people on the board are very familiar with it at this stage. Um, and I will focus on some of the items that came up in the review comments. Many of these were, were details and, and small little notes to be added and little bits and pieces to be taken care of. I don't intend to discuss those with the board, uh, just some of the more major items. And I wanted to start by saying we do have an update on the DEP permit, which we don't have at this stage. So we understand the board can't make a final determination on this until we have that in hand. Uh, having said that, I think it would be uh, very beneficial to us to have some discussion with the board on five or six of the items that came up in the review comments. So I will keep it to that. Uh, the first one that Jamel mentioned was a reduction in the driveway width coming into the site. Um, the applicant is fine with reducing that down to 16 feet. Uh, we just wanted to check with staff that that has been run by the fire department because the only reason we kept it at 20 feet was because the fire department usually requires a 20-foot wide access into the site. If the fire department is, is fine with that, sorry, I'll let you answer. I believe the fire department is okay. okay. Um, they've, they've reviewed, um, but I can double check with them um, in the near future. Right. Just, just one <coughs> small word of caution, um, and this is just to temper your expectations. You see the 20-foot wide uh, lane that comes in now. When we reduce that down to 16 feet, we're going to have to increase the radius on the right turn coming into the site. So you'll see a bigger radius on the, on the right turn coming in, and that's so that we can get a fire truck into the site down that 16-foot wide lane. And we appreciate that they'll probably be coming from Oak Hill, but at the same time, they'll want to get in from both directions. So uh, we will make that modification to the plan, and we're, we're uh, fine with that. Uh, one of the other comments that came up was related to the landscaping, and particularly the landscaping between the building and Route 1, um, and asked if it was, if it was um, pertinent to add some landscaping there. Uh, what we get into with this, and th this is a, uh, a conversation we had actually during the master plan process, and I'm sure some of you will remember it, is while there is a desire to have some buffering and to, and to make the frontage of the building look good, and, and you'll see from the architectural renderings, we think the building does look very good. Uh, we do appreciate the need for some complementary plantings in there, but we don't want to hide the building from the street. And one of the discussions we had at the master plan stage was about having what is termed active street frontage, which is a connectivity, a visual connectivity between pedestrian traffic on the street and people inside the building. And so you can't put up a blanket screen there that's going to hide the building from the street because you want that approachability and that connectivity. And we think the landscaping plan that we've developed here really focuses on the area and breaking up the mass of the building towards the front of the building. There's a berm in there. There is pretty extensive plantings 
along that frontage. But we still maintain that connectivity between the pedestrian elements in the street and the building. And the other thing to note on the landscaping plan is what you see are, are the additional plantings. And I'm sure folks who have been pl past the site or have got the chance to visit the site during the site walk will appreciate as we start tapering towards the edges of the site, towards Holy Donut, there's actually a pretty substantial stand of trees there between the two properties which will stay. And as you come back from, from the Route 1 frontage, from the, uh, the Big 20 bowling side of the site, there's also a substantial stand of trees there. So what we're trying to do with the landscaping plan is supplementary plantings around what the new developed area is and then tapering off into a more natural landscape, particularly down towards the rear of the site and down towards Lincoln Avenue, which is not actually tremendously visible. The site is not tremendously visible from, from Lincoln Avenue. And if you drive up there, you'll see you, you catch a glimpse as you come around the corner of the bank where that solar array is going to be. But you won't really get a glimpse of the building or further into the site. So what we've tried to do is temper that landscaping plan, as I say, to dress up the front of the building, to address the parking lot and, and shade the parking lot, and then complement the natural landscaping. So we feel that, that, that that's appropriate. There is one element that's mentioned in the review uh, comments that, that we will add, and that is some landscape, some, some larger shrubs around the generator pad. And that's, we had, I think there's actually a perennial bed around there now, but we do think it's appropriate, and I think the landscape architect suggested rhododendron or something that's going to provide some fairly dense evergreen coverage between the generator pad and the street. The third item uh, is the parking, and staff rightly points out there's actually 85 spaces. I had to count them three times, and I came up with a different number three times, so I had two other people in the office check it. There's 85, not 84. Um, and this, that's another element that we discussed a little bit at the master plan stage. This, although under the zoning ordinance, this is considered business office use, this building will not function anything like a normal office building. Uh, we actually calculated the parking demand based on their existing facility and the proposed program uses in the building, which include uh, full-time administrative staff, traveling staff, bereavement services, training, uh, we calculated the parking demand for this to be a little over 100 spaces. And actually, when we came before you with the sketch plan, you saw 100 spaces. And you still see 23 proposed future parking spaces shown on the plan because that's hospices and our feeling of where the parking demand lies. Now, there may be things they can do in their operations to bring it down to that 85 level. Um, but we think... An, an, by putting that, that future parking in and putting it off, we've, we are hoping that we'll be able to adapt the usage of the building to that smaller number, recognizing that it's bigger than the zoning standard. Um, but by way of an example of, of the existing facility at Hospice of Southern Maine, um, we visited there myself and Bill Bray visited there on a Wednesday morning actually to discuss the entrance when we were going through that process in October. The current building they're in at 180 US Route 1 is 6,000 square feet. It has 47 parking spaces on that site. The day that we went in there on that Wednesday morning, there were 64 cars parked. 47 of them in the spaces that are striped in the parking lot, six of them in the aisles and the entrances of the parking lot, and another 11 down the side street next to the hospice facility. So that was 6,000 square feet and there were 64 cars parked outside it. So you'll appreciate the applicant kind of understands the magnitude of the parking demand that they're expecting this facility. And if you look around, you know, now they have the luxury of having a side street next to the facility which people can park in informally. Um, this site, if we don't provide enough parking on it, realistically, where are people going to go that, that is going to be safe and accessible to the site? So we think we've done, we've done our due diligence. This is not something that hospice obviously doesn't want to build more parking than they have to. It, I mean, just on financial grounds alone, a parking space will cost you somewhere north of $4,500 a space. So putting extra spaces in here is not something they want to do. It's something they need to do. So we feel that's an appropriate number for the parking. Um, there were two, a couple of other comments, one which was surprising. Um, and I hope we can rectify here. 
there was a comment, I believe, from the police department that was suggesting that we put fencing around all of the solar arrays uh, for security purposes. And we, we, none of us could quite figure out what that meant or why there's some security issue with solar panels. Uh, it's not something that I've seen on ground-mounted solar arrays before. And it does present some significant problems to the applicant. One, the cost of fencing it would be significant to fence all the way around those. Two, you have to be able to access the solar panels for maintenance. Three, you have to get in and out of fencing that you put in there and keep the snow from building up inside the fencing if you put it around there. So it just becomes a, a bit of a practical nightmare. And, and frankly, the applicant is, is strongly opposed to, to putting fencing around those solar panels. Uh, you know, another element of this is, is the education and the, and the promotion of, of using clean energy resources. And, and the applicant, I think, is rightly proud of the fact that they are using solar panels and geothermal uh, wells to, to just provide the energy source for their building. Um, and by putting these on display, you're actively encouraging other people to do the same thing. And I, I think that can only be a good thing in the current environment. A um, couple of other more minor items. Uh, one, there was a note about the fountain, that we're salvaging the fountain and what are we doing with it. Uh, hospice has no interest in, in reusing the fountain. But when we first proposed this project, I'm not even sure where it came from, but there was a comment that, that somebody didn't want to see the fountain get destroyed. Um, so all the way through the site plans, we've, we've held it as being salvaged. And if anyone wants to come and take it, just like they did with the, with the arch, you know, I mean, the town came and took the arch off the site. If anyone wants to come and take it, it will be salvaged and preserved. And, and I think on, on one of the previous applications, the suggestion was made, it will be free, uh, and it will be held onto for at least 30 days at the start of construction. And if somebody has a use for it somewhere else, they'd, they'd be more than welcome to come get it. Um, the last item I have, and this is just a clarification, was on the site lighting. Um, and there was a question in there, and I know the board is very interested in site lighting and, and trying to have these, um, have them programmed so they'll dim at times when the lighting is not needed. And I'm reassured by the lighting engineer that they have not just photo sensors, but they have clock timers on them, which can be automatically programmed to dusk and dawn. So the lights will go off at dawn come on again at dusk. They have motion sensors on them as well. So the site lighting in the parking lot, if there's no activity and no motion detected for 20 minutes, all the lights will go off. As soon as there is activity, the light will come on, and then it'll come on for that 20 minute period and then dim again. And I, I, can, already, I can already hear some of the comments about wildlife and whatever, um, but it is the most the most pragmatic way of designing the lighting, the most controllable way of designing the lighting. So we'll typically, you can, you can manually program them as well as I understand it, but they'll typically, typically be set to come on at dusk and go off at dawn. And I think that's my six items. All right, thank you very much. Um, we do have an opportunity here for public comment. Is there anyone that would like to get up and speak? Just ask that you approach the podium. And... All right, I'll close public comment. Um, so let's start with, uh, start with Roger on this one. Um, I'm glad to see you back here. I think the building looks terrific. And I, I can totally accept your rationale for the um, additional plantings. Um, I think it's going to be a very attractive um, building at that location. It's going to really enhance that section of uh, Route 1. Um, and I, um, I, I understand your, um, your explanation for the, the parking situation. Um, it's kind of interesting. This is the second item tonight where we basically had to depend on what you do you know, what you expect the parking to be, uh, where it doesn't fit any particular model, you know, like a pure office building or something like that. Um, I, I don't quite understand the, um, the police with the solar rays. 
um, unless they they're aware of some vandalism that's taking place. But um, you know, uh, it would have been helpful if they told us that. I'm sure if all of a sudden, you know, if you didn't have any kind of fencing around there, and then you did have some vandal vandalism, something would be done <laughs> one way or the other. So um, so. I, you know, I, I, and I can understand you want, you want to display that. It's part of the whole theme of your, you know, um, this, this whole construction. So I, I guess, uh, and, and I'm not being paid by you either. <laughs> so um, I, I think I'm pretty satisfied with everything you've, um, you've said so far. Thank you, Roger. Jen? Um, I just, uh, my first question is whether or not you've given any thought to, um, any type of signage or just information in general that might be available to the public, either walking by or, or driving by on Lincoln Avenue. Um, you know, you were talking about wanting to sort of showcase some of these unique, um, sustainable energy features. I just think it would be neat if that was if there's any, any more information available to passers-by than just, you know, the, the solar array, array um, maybe some of the details on its production or things like that uh, might just be kind of neat. That's, so that's a great question. I can answer that thought. one straight away. There, there, there is actually a plan to have a, 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 monitor, a monitor in the lobby oh, yep. to show where the energy is coming from and how much of the energy is coming from from the, these different sources. So yeah, that, that, that's very much part of the mission, yeah. so. Cool, kudos for that. Um, the, I can't help but <laughs> get stuck on the, um, the crosswalk orientation inside your parking lot. I suspect that that's because you wanna plant the end cap of that island. There's a little more science to it than that. Okay. And, and we appreciate the comment coming up. Um, one, it's, one, it's a desire line. Um, and you'll see where the striping is in the two, the two last spaces in the center aisle. And th there's a very deliberate reason for that. That's in case they find during the operation of the building. Now, typically, um, handicapped parking runs on percentages to meet the ADA requirement. Right. Uh, some medical facilities, that actually goes up quite significantly, and it goes up to 10% of the parking load. Um, we have planned, in case the, the demand of the building is higher than the six spaces that we already have, we have planned the other four spaces in the center aisle to be handicapped, which is why the tip down comes down there, which creates the gap in the island, which is what everybody's going to walk through. Mm -hmm. And then we actually thought when we got the comment, well, you could skew the, the crosswalk to go across to that other handicap aisle. But in fact, everybody's going to walk straight towards the front door. So if you stripe it straight across, people just won't use it. It's a parking lot. They'll just walk straight from that gap in the island straight to the front door, which is why we have it at that strange angle. Because it's, it's, that's going to be the desire line. That's where people are going to walk. Sure, that makes sense. Um, it also lets you plant the, you know, I think you're, the landscaping plan there for the end is sort of designed to be um, symmetrical and nice. Um, the, the skew caught my eye, but also the, you know, the potential for anyone backing out of that last space, um, you know, would potentially be backing over that crosswalk, but um, probably your chance of conflict there is low, and they would probably be backing over a part of it anyway. But thanks for that explanation. That, that's helpful. I'm sure that has to do with your, um, your future parking numbers, uh, too. It's, I mean, we meet, we meet, we're exceeding the ADA requirement right now, but it's okay. just, it's just a, it becomes a factor of what type of people are visiting yeah. the building. And if you get more mobility-impaired people visiting the building on certain occasions and you find you're short of handicapped parking, then mm -hmm. we want the ability to add to that. Sure. Um, I have another question about that fu future parking area. What's your intent in terms of um, treating that area as part of your initial build-out? So will you, is your intent to sort of 
to just kind of leave that to, to rough grade it or is your will you be building it up like you would a parking lot and just grassing over the top that's going to be that's the the intent is right now to to build that as a grass lawn that you'll see there's infrastructure in there in case it got mm -hmm. turned into a parking lot mm -hmm. so that you could actually grade it and pave it but the hope is that the 85 spaces will be enough and then that becomes a nice outdoor function area and potentially a place where you could put an outdoor tent oh, or something space, like yeah. that Okay. With a, with a fountain, with a fountain with right a fountain. there. <laughs> um, you know, I think that's. Oops, I think that's. Um, I think that's a good idea. You know, parking is a. It's a delicate thing, and as you've, you know, we, nobody, wants to have, too much parking if it's not needed. But the flip side of that coin is that you know that you have operations that are where you need more parking and people are going to park no matter what, whether you have a space for them or not. And so the overflow can sometimes be problematic, probably like you're experiencing now. You know, if people are parking in the aisles that aren't really designed for parking, then that's a circulation problem. So um, I think that's a, I, I appreciate your, your approach on that, I guess. And, and for coming with your knowledge um, of your own operations and what you think you may need to be able to explain that. That's helpful. Um, that's, that's all that I have. Are you going for any sort of LEED certification with this, these plans or? No. No? Well, no. I, I applaud you for leading that course here. You don't you normally see uh, land mounted solar panels going down Route 1 in Scarborough, which I think is going to be pretty exciting. Um, and looking at some of the features you have with the bicycle and all that kind of stuff, I was thinking maybe you were going for a lead platinum or something like that. Given that, um, just a couple of comments. Uh, you've done so much on the energy side. Maybe consider one or two EV parking spots for electric vehicles. That was that was actually mentioned at one stage, and we, you know it may come up as a as a future addition. Um, it was just we we went around with the with the uh, you know the the applicability and the budget and those types of things, mm -hmm. and, and that may come up in the future. It's always cheaper when you're digging the hole now to mm -hmm. true. lay the conduit. <laughs> um, uh, just give that some, a little bit more thought, maybe over a cup of. Aroma Joe coffee sometime and see if you can't put one or two in there. Um, the photometrics, uh, I wanted to just to mention on your, your lighting, uh, assuming that you're probably going to have a BAS system in here to do your HVAC, uh, um, automated energy management system <laughs> combined. More than all. likely, yeah, that's, that's over my head. I, I generally stay outside the building whenever I can right. make that choice. Just maybe you can talk about it with your, your designer and your, your mechanical electrical contractors as you go down, but the advanced lighting controls that you can put with the LEDs, they're not on and off. You can actually lower the, the lumen output, so you never really have to have them off. And like if you had a function during the day or during the evening and uh, they were all exiting, you had a program that at 10 p.m. the lights would come up so people walked to the parking lot and it had a little more light and then it settles back down. So the technology is out there. It's fairly cheap now. Um, and and so I have a feeling that we have something like that, but I didn't fully understand everything that the electrical engineer sent me. So I just I gave you the version that I understood. Okay. Um, but he yeah, he mentioned kind of the similar acronyms to what you were mentioning. Yeah, I well, I'll see it really again, register. I'm sure. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, I think you're addressing the, the, um, the requirements for uh, the site plan, and uh, I applaud you for going a few steps um, further and doing some uh, noteworthy energy environmental um, initiatives. Yeah, the other Rick took all my questions. That's the problem with having two electrical engineers on one side. Um, the, um, the solar rays, the only thing I can think of in the fence is, um, or thought might be, 
if you put a chain link fence up so that you weren't actually obstructing the view of the solar arrays, but you were protecting them from, did our, someone already say that and I missed it? We're not it? allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> well, probably a design standard issue. Yeah. It, it's actually prohibited by the ordinance to put a chain link fence up. <laughs> oh. So. Well, you know, it's not a high, it's not like a real high crime district, so yeah, I don't really see anybody driving to the hospice to mess with your solar arrays anyway. So I don't think people have been stealing them lately. I mean, I haven't seen anything in the paper yet. But um, other than that, I will tell you, I very much like what you've done with the building and with the, the overall site layout. And I think you've done a really good job, and I think it's going to be an asset to the community. And um, I thank you for bringing it to us. That's all I have. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, um, I'm going to go back to the landscaping for a bit. Um, but what I'm looking at is the uh, what you have here uh, entitled the geothermal test well. You've got 10, 12. Um, is that 12 wells? I am not clear on the yeah, how the structure there's, works. There's 12 going to go in, you'll see that one actually went in, the test well went in, so they did the testing with the one well, and that's how they figured out how many and how deep those wells are going to be. Uh, what's the visibility of those? Uh, none. Piping's so, underground. It's, it's, there's a well cap, you won't see it. So that um, you could, perhaps, uh, put plantings, uh, flower, flower arrangement, flower planting beds along there. Is that possible? Yeah, it is. I mean, you'll see actually um, there are a couple of street trees in there already, relatively young ones. And I think the intent is where the, where the hatching ends, that's going to be kind of a maintained grass area. And then it's going to taper off to, so the, so the uh, western half of the geothermal field will be natural landscaping. It will be retained as natural landscaping. So that line on the plan, that curved line there that goes from the, from the hatch to the, to the blank. Yeah, wait a minute. Let me find that on the landscape of your hands. Yeah, right there. Right there. So to the west of that will be kind of what you see there now. Um, it actually, it, there's some pretty large trees down along the property line with uh, holy donut. And then there'll be some, some natural shrub area, this kind of brush shrub area. And then it'll, it'll taper off into a more kind of, uh, more managed grass type area nearer the building. What are those trees? I, I, even with this, I can't uh, tell what they are. Which ones are you looking at? The big ones that are in the berm? No, I'm looking at the ones parallel to the street along what would be a sidewalk. Oh, they're existing. So they're, they're there already. They're not, I have to say, they're not in tremendous, they're not very big and they're not in tremendously good condition, probably because of the salt spray that comes off the, the street. And also you see there's a big overhead line there and I'm guessing if they get anywhere near that, near the height of that line, CMP is going to come along and cut them 12 feet off the line. So that's one of the, that's one of the other reasons why we, don't, we didn't plant big trees along there, because if we do, they're going to end up as half trees. So you'll see this. If, if you drive down there, and it may be difficult to see at this time of year, because they're not very big. And they, I don't think they've got leaves on them right now. But they're probably 8, 10 feet high. Any notion what kind they are? You're asking the wrong man. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody in the audience? Green. <laughs> the right man? <laughs> um, I'm trying to, uh, basically, I'm, I'm looking to see if there is a pos option for additional planting and buffering along that area. We would have liked to, I mean, the, the other thing that, that came up actually in the last applicant is, is the underground piping. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not going to see the wells, but there's piping from each of those wells, and there's two lines come out of, you know, an output and return line from each of those. So we're not going to plant anything that has deep roots over those lines. 
Yeah, I wasn't talking deep roots again, just uh, low plantings and some flowers, things like that. Yeah. Perennials. Well, we can so we could certainly look at, at adding a, a perennial bed in that area. I um, think that I think that would be helpful. It would it you've got a, a large <coughs> clump of trees and buffering. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden nothing. So something that smooths that buffering area into that lawn area would be very helpful. Yep. I think would create a good transition on the street, would still leave visibility for the building. Um, I think I, I think the current parking, I know we've been round and round um, with the number of parking spaces required. I think the current parking that you've proposed, uh, I'm willing to go with that. It's reasonable. Um, I was uh, would not have been willing had you kept that future parking as current parking. Uh, I think I haven't heard of any um, anybody wandering around and stealing solar arrays, so I, I think you're probably safe. Uh, and since they, since putting up a fence would kind of um, kind of defeat the purpose, since it would might block out the sun in some sun in some areas, that that doesn't seem to work either. So I think I'm I'm set. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. All right. I feel like I get to answer the twenty million dollar question here. I, I think that the fence idea from the police department is that when those are mounted on the ground surface, I think the, 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 that like kids, teenagers, you know, um, others, it's, I think it's, you can't resist picking up a rock and seeing what will this do? But you know, that's seriously. I'm serious. I mean, I come from I come from Northern Maine. Okay, trust me on this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of understand. But but you know, I mean, there's there's windows in the building as well. I mean, you know, put a fence. Yeah, the but you know, <laughs> people live there. You can hear that. All right. Um, last I recall, and forgive me, I have been absent a couple meetings. Is the fountain was going to be used as a po focal point for some reflection, outdoor reflection area. And so this does seem like a turn of events to me as far as, you know, sort of the historical placemaking space kind of a thing. So you're looking at me like I have a third eye, but I very much remember the reflection, outdoor reflection area. No, nope. nothing. Um, I remember. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, as far as the plantings, okay. thank you. I was like questioning things. Um, plantings um, along Route One. I um, thank you for sort of considering my my um, colleagues' sort of recommendations to just uh, give us a little bit more. That's mm -hmm. very much appreciated and. You know, even though I, I understand what you're saying about the visual connectivity too, but just the plantings also, uh, I'm just thinking about like, you know, and I know I'm not sure how high you want to go up, but it also provides some, you know, just some some natural buffer from, you know, the sirens and things like that on Route One. I'm yeah. just thinking it might might be good. Um, what watershed are we in? Are we Scarborough in Marsh. Okay, it's not Willowdale. No, there's God, tiny I am batting a thousand. portion in the out. back yeah. corner of the property. Okay, I think goes so there. Scarborough Marsh is even, I think, more important um, in that um, it's it's really it's the large. You know, I could yeah. go on and on. I'm you know a member of Friends of Scarborough Marsh as far as its significant importance, both as a as as a value in our ecological, but also economic and quality of life. And so what I'm, where I'm going with this is can you mitigate some of those impacts of the parking spaces in any other way? Whether it's thinking about uh, porous pavement uh, lined or any other, I know that you're a low impact design guy and I know that you're very creative. So I'm just thinking outside the box here and yeah, and we did, making you know, an Yeah, to ask. be honest with you, we did. We, we looked at a number of different options. I mean, what, what we're, one of the benefits of having this site is we're not space constrained. 
Right. So, you know, the, the filter ponds in the bioretention area, you can see we've got like four bioretention areas and one larger filter pond. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're probably, to be honest with you, they're probably about 30% oversized to meet mm -hmm. the to meet the requirements, that mm -hmm. you know, the specific requirements of DEP. And because we have space to do mm -hmm. it, and because we can incorporate them mm -hmm. into the overall landscape plan, then, you know, there's no need to spend it, spend the money on something more intensive or, you know, like a proprietary device or, you know, the porous pavement, we've, we've used that in places, but we tend to use it in places where there's not much alternative because it's expensive. All right, what about some of the uh, sort of the geo grid options kind of a thing, whether it's not, you may not really need to, to pave it kind of a thing. Maybe you just need to stabilize it. Well, to be honest with you, the last time I priced out on a project, a mm -hmm. geo grid stabilized mm -hmm. parking surface, it was more expensive than pavement. Um, I, I just feel like, you know, you're taking it to that level, like my colleagues were saying, as far as approaching LEED certification that, you know, you want the extra parking spaces, can we, can we, and I also feel like it would be a great sort of PR kind of thing for you all too, to talk about how you have mitigated the spaces, you know you need more, you know it's an operational thing, just like the, the folks did, they were on the other end of the spectrum saying less, you know, we went through the reasons and, and why kind of a thing. And I understand what you're saying about, we have oversized stormwater units and that kind of thing, but. And I say we did. We, you know, we looked at various options, and, and cost is a driver. Uh, maintenance is also a driver. And, and some of the places where we've put those geogrid reinforced surfaces mm -hmm. in, they haven't performed very well through the winter, frankly. And, and people have come with a snowplow, and all the parking spaces that hospice are going to need, they're going to need them year round. Okay. And if you come with a snowplow, all right. You clip the edge of one of those things and tear half the parking space up. So it's not I don't want to dictate the means and methods, but you know I'm sure there are 101 different ways that we could potentially mitigate this. So my question is going to be back to staff that the future parking, what process would we need to go through to authorize that? Or is this site plan approval going to authorize that future parking as well? Um, so the, I believe it's a site plan or maybe it's a zoning ordinance, one of the two. Um, states that if it's needed, um, it has to be, the, the code enforcement officer can permit it. Okay. So it should be incorporated in the stormwater, wouldn't it say if they show the future? So 30% And it is. So the 30% oversizing you're talking about uh, is includes for? Include in that. So it's it's not really 30% oversized, it's no, oversized no, no. for it's the future parking. It's 30% oversized it's still with oversized. all the parking. Well, um, we have, speaking of the Scarborough Marsh watershed, you have a very significant portion of, the, of a little piece of the Scarborough Marsh that sort of is trying to secede, if you will. You have this very large wetland area um, that you've done a good job, too, of, of sort of staying away. Um, just wondering if, if um, I have to make the ask. I'm going to push you for if you've got to have the extra spaces. And we're talking, we go from 85 to another 100 and something here with this future parking. So if that isn't going to be a geo grid and you are going to pave this, now is our time to talk about the fact that it's going to go from 85 to over 115 with that. 108. 108, thank you. And just for reference, that wetland that comes down on mm -hmm. the left-hand side of the building, that was actually created by what was formerly the drainage system for Route 1, which used to discharge between the two properties, mm -hmm. between the Holy Donut. Mm -hmm. And so it created that, that sure. wetland area in there. And since, actually, that drainage system has been rerouted to go down to Willowdale, so that wetland is shrinking because it's not seeing any water anymore. So the wetland is in the Willowdale watershed, but your property isn't? No, the, the, new, the newly configured drainage system in oh, Route 1. Oh, got it. I see what you're saying. Okay, got it. All right. Um, okay, well, I'm going to make a final push, I guess, to my colleagues to say, are we comfortable with really what we're authorizing here is potentially 108 parking spaces. Um, and I think that's all I have. Thank you, Robert. <clears throat> so I don't want to um, 
I want to go over stuff that we've already discussed. Um, <clears throat> but I will ask, uh, I think there's one topic that, not critical, but we haven't heard on, which was, um, there was a question about a five foot gravel shoulder um, along the, one of the trails. Yes, that's, that's for two reasons. Actually, it helps us with a little snow storage when they plow out along the, around the corner of the parking lot. And it helps for potential overflow parking. So that gravel shoulder on the left-hand side on the way out, again, that's, it's a concern that if there isn't enough parking on the site and there isn't enough snow storage in other areas, that gives us the ability to have that. And I, <coughs> I know Robin, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, guys. Um, so Robin, I know your, um, you know, your, you know, your concerns regarding the, the amount of parking that might be on the site. And I think we've had a couple of applicants that have come through with um, these types of situations. And I don't think, I'll, I can't envision why an applicant would want to put in more parking than they would have to. It's a huge expense. It's something, and I, I've said this before, I have to rely on the applicant's business. Um, and what they're telling me they, their, you know, their needs are for a space like this. I'm comfortable with what I see for parking. I don't know if any other board members need to weigh in on whether or not this is just too much at this point, but I, I at least appreciate that some of it's demarcated for later. It's still more just accounting for it. Um, I said I feel relatively comfortable, even though it is close to the marsh. So uh, that's my personal feeling. Anyone else can kind of chime in with theirs. Um, do you have all the direction you need for your next yes, appearance? Yes, we yep. we'll, we'll prepare a comment response letter just responding to all those things. We'll, we'll make the little tweaks to the plans, um, and then hopefully when we get the DEP permit, we'll be back to see you. Okay. Um, I don't believe you need to invest in fencing at this time. Um, Thank you. The, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Your insurance company will let you know if you need to. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> We're at the 3 hour mark. Charity five minutes, I guess. Take So, I'm going to take five minutes. When did we say we're going to start the 6.30 start time? Oh, June. Not till June. It's start time 6.30 in time.
discussed. <laughs> All right, sorry for the delay. Uh, we're back. Um, up next, we have Preston Properties LLC requests a site plan amendment for 29 Pleasant Hill Road, Assessor's Map U50, Lot 30A. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This project's located in the Industrial Zoning District along Pleasant Hill Road. So the applicant's proposing a revitalization project to the existing uh, fitness center. The proposal includes the construction of an outdoor exercise area, additional plantings, and the reconfiguration of the main building entrance. Steph has just a few comments. Um, so given the increase of impervious services on the site, the applicant uh, indicated they discussed their proposal with main DEP staff and that they were comfortable uh, with this project being considered a minor amendment to their stormwater permit. Uh, staff recommends that the applicant provide any correspondence between them and the main DEP for the record. The applicant's also proposing to eliminate the trees along the property's frontage along Pleasant Hill Road. Uh, staff recommends that the applicant actually replace these trees uh, with new uh, deciduous trees to help define the edge of the roadway. And that's all that I have. Thanks, Jamel. Unfortunately for us, we have the most direct engineer presenting to us this evening, so there is a chance we will hear the next item and last item of the night. I will certainly do my best, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. My name is Sean Frank. I'm an engineer with Sebago Technics. Uh, with me tonight is Elliot Chamberlain and uh, Preston Peebles of Preston Properties, LLC, uh, the owners of uh, uh, 29 Pleasant Hill Road. Uh, originally, this was proposed to be a building addition as, long, as well as the site improvements and uh, the outdoor facility. Uh, obviously, we're pressing up against time from a season standpoint, obviously from the outside use. Um, so uh, that's why we've kind of broken it into the two uh, with the intention of coming back to the board sometime in the near future for a building addition. Uh, the plan before that Jamal has up now uh, basically is the, uh, uh, the proposed landscape and then improvements along the, uh, the entrance. Uh, it's true, if you look, we did include pictures of the existing vegetation along Pleasant Hill Road. You can see it's relatively unkempt, really hasn't been maintained. Uh, so the landscape architect, Tom Emery, was of the opinion that those should probably be removed. Uh, they're probably going to, we're afraid they may fall down at some point. Uh, we weren't proposing anything new along those lines, but we have seen the, the town planner's report, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, remarks. And uh, if the board's comfortable, we'll certainly coordinate with town staff in terms of uh, some street trees uh, along the frontage uh, in replacement of the ones that were taken down. Um, the sign that's there is in fact, this, the proposed sign is the, the existing sign. I, I may have misspoken that when I uh, uh, wrote my letter. So uh, from Jamel's standpoint, uh, the sign that is there, and again, that I think is, is included within the pictures, is a sign that will remain. Uh, obviously, you can see there's some, uh, uh, some landscape and proposed uh, landscape and bed around that sign, uh, as well as uh, you know new trees coming up along the entrance on either side of the access drive coming into the property. Uh, and then Jamel, maybe if we could s to skip to the to the next pl next plan from uh, Harriman. Uh, obviously, one of the main features is the improvements at the uh, at the project and or the building entrance itself, right right there. In terms of uh, you know new sidewalks associated with that granite curbing to define that new space, add that new space in through there, uh, some benches within that area, a bicycle rack, and then a suggestion of staff. Uh, some additional landscaping, if you will, that would kind of uh, buffer the existing parking lot from the, uh, the proposed uh, workout facility. And then, Jamel, if I could just go to our, um, our uh, the site plan, if we could. Um, obviously, this is what we're proposing in terms of the outside portion of it. Uh, basically, it's an outside turf area, and it's almost like in what we call it an adult jungle gym, almost. And uh, I'm sure you see a lot of... Uh, 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 the strongman competitions and the people working the ropes and, and flipping the tires uh, and doing those types of things, obviously not real appropriate for indoor work. Uh, what we're trying to do is provide them an area for the outside. Uh, this will be fully enclosed from with a gate, uh, excuse me, a fence. Uh, the only access to the customers and the clients will be f interior from the building itself. Um, so there won't be any direct access. As we discussed, uh, Mr. Emery and F. Hammerin did add some additional landscaping between uh, the proposed facility in the parking lot. Uh, it will require that we relocate and basically rebuild, if you will, uh, the level lip spreader and plunge pool uh, that services the uh, stormwater from the, uh, from the parking areas. Um, actually, I think that's a good thing. It's a, it's a little used down through there, so we'll rebuild that to the uh, same size and specs, and I'll certainly get those details uh, to town staff 
uh, and basically it's just going to mean that we uh, relocate the uh, outfall pipe coming from that uh, from that stone drain system as well to basically center it within that level lip spreader. Uh, they also asked for some additional plantings, if you will, along the edge of the parking and within the island. Again, we would kind of hope that maybe you could have that conversation uh, when we're next in front of you associated with the building, uh, building addition and uh, look at it as on a more holistic approach. Uh, we did talk to Bob Green. I have actually submitted the minor, it's a minor revision uh, uh, to the DEP for this uh, minor uh, uh, stormwater that's out there. Uh, we are in the Nonsuch watershed. Uh, flood control was never a part of this process due to its location within the watershed. Um, it was all really uh, basically treatment. It was TSS removal out there. So uh, again, when we go through the building addition, we may be revisiting that with the DEP as well and with, uh, with the town engineer. Um, so with that, Mr. Chairman, I, I think we're showing some improvements out through here uh, the, with the minor, uh, uh, minor addition, if you will, of the outside uh, workout facility. Uh, with that, I'll conclude my presentation. So I'll be happy to answer any questions the board has. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, with that, is there uh, public comment is available this evening? Is there anyone here that would like to get up and speak on behalf of this project? No? All right. I'm going to close public comment. Um, so for this one, guys, what I'm going to do is just kind of, um, if you feel like there's something, it's pretty a straightforward proposal, but if you do have a question or concern, it appears that Mr. Frank has acknowledged uh, most of the staff comments here um, and, and a willingness to uh, work through those with staff uh, for the presentation of the next set. So. Uh, does anyone here have anything they really want to highlight for Mr. Frank or the applicant? Yes, right yeah, here. Uh, where, is, where is the building expansion going to be? It would help me to know what On you're the, planning. Uh, the Westley side, back towards Route 1, if you will. That's correct, right okay. there, yes. So you're asking for us to... Um, we're just asking for the approval for the, tonight. On the, on the, right, we're uh, just asking for the approval okay. tonight for... Uh, obviously for the revised landscaping scheme uh, and the outside workout facility um, and with the understanding that you know we will be back in with that building addition and certainly we can look at some additional things at that point in time if the board's comfortable with that whether some additional landscaping improvements associated with it and or uh, stormwater management. I, I drove past the site on my way down to Pleasant Hill and um, uh, it, this is a considerable improvement so <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Does anyone else have any comments that they wanted to bring up on this project this time? No? I have a question. Sure. Uh, one of the conditions is the additional plantings within the parking area. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure. If yeah, that's part of the, um, the draft we have here. So I don't know if the board wants uh, to take <clears throat> that on at a later date or keep it in there. Uh, you, you are coming back. Uh, that's, certainly, well, that's certainly the full intent, yes. Okay. Um, but can we can we maybe do something here um, if that we don't see you with a absolutely a yes if that'd be fine coming if, if we don't come back to you within let's say six months, six months then then you're going to come back to we'll staff back to, to staff. work with a developed plan yes and if, if that if fails again, you'll, we'll see you again yes wait, wait. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just make something clear when you talk about the additional plantings uh, we are looking at the tree plantings along the parking area, correct? Yes, okay. yes. the landscaping so that was shown on the Harriman plans are, are part of this proposal. Okay. Okay, with additional, so it's, the it's staff what, had asked for additional within the islands perhaps and, and maybe along the periphery of the parking. And those are the ones we were talking about in terms of if we could wait to, because uh, I don't know, are we going to be doing anything in terms of the parking? I don't think so, but at the same time, I'd rather just not be planting something today uh, that we're going to be taking back out again tomorrow. I don't think we will, but I'd just as soon have it more ways out as the whole right, you just confuse me again um so again this time of go, night that's easy so jamel can we go back to the harriman plan that first one again i'm sorry but uh the first one right right there so so that all that is what that is proposed to be as part of this proposal to be installed okay so that the front aisle leading to the yes those are new plants those that's are new correct. trees along there okay Absolutely. that's why i wanted to make sure thank you any other questions? To be replaced with street tree landscaping would be part of this uh, process. Yeah. No. And the street trees right, will be part of the condition and coordination with town staff. And you're going to be removing the birch trees? Yes, it looks that birch tree I don't think is in good shape, to be honest with you. Okay. Come back. 
comfortable? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. All right. <clears throat> With that said, I move to approve the site plan amendment project titled Next Gen Fitness Center proposed by Preston Properties LLC as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics dated 5619 with the following findings and conditions. I say the findings as uh, stated here in the, the paperwork. <clears throat> conditions. One, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall revise the plan set to include A, deciduous trees plantings along the property's Pleasant Hill Road frontage as noted in the staff review comments memo dated 5 2019. B, the proposed sidewalk outdoor space improvements adjacent to the building's main entrance. C, additional plantings within the parking area as noted in the staff review comments memo dated 5, 2019 are to be addressed with the future building expansion plans. <clears throat> D, details about the relocated pipe adjacent to the proposed outdoor exercise area. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, provide correspondence, documentation between the applicant and the main DEP in regards to the proposed minor revision to the approved stormwater permit. B, provide a plan depicting the building's existing exits and how these will interact with the new outdoor exercise area. C, coordinate with Scarborough Sanitary District as the project may require their approval. If required, the applicant shall submit approval documents to the planning department. D, address the comments and Woodward and Kerman's memo dated 516-19 that shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Three, prior to the issuance of a sign permit, the applicant shall submit a final signage plan that shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department, which I believe is no longer necessary based on the clarification. That's correct. I'm going to strike number three. Your new number three shall read, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. That is the motion. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Comfortable with what you have just heard from conditions? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. All in favor? Okay, so thank you, folks. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Last item of the evening, SAI Group has on behalf of Electrifying America, request a site plan amendment for 500 Gallery Boulevard, Assessor's Map R37, Lot 3308. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This project's located in the regional or B2 zoning district, uh, in the Wal actually in the Walmart parking lot. So the applicant's proposing uh, four uh, pay-for-use electric vehicle charging dispensers and associated utilities to power the stations within eight existing parking spaces uh, within the Walmart parking lot. Staff is generally comfortable with the project as proposed, but has recommended the applicant provide uh, some additional plantings adjacent to the dispensers and around the proposed fence to help soften the impact of the project. The applicant has also requested a number of waivers um, from the site plan review ordinance, given they are not applicable to the proposed project. Staff would like to point out that the board re does require additional plantings that a, revi or a landscape plan will be required to be submitted. Uh, so staff's provided a draft motion for the board's consideration uh, for this project. Thank you very much. And uh, for the applicant, would you like to just introduce yourself and the plan and uh, keep in mind that uh, what we're really interested in, some of these main elements that you may have seen from staff and uh, be happy to just go over those. I know it's kind of a, a straightforward proposal. So. Right. Um, we'll just like to add context where necessary. But um, sure. my name's Joe Willett. I'm the program manager for all... Uh, our EVCI projects, which is short for uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure across the country for a um, number of customers. Um, this one in particular is for Electrify America, as mentioned. Um, the intent here is to install four charging stations uh, for use for Walmart customers. Um, the scope of the project is, is small in comparison to what we've probably already heard tonight for others, but um, we're installing um, some uh, underground conduits um, to power the stations, uh, to help make connections. We're installing um, four charging cabinets that'll power the dispensers. Uh, there'll be a switch gear cabinet um, that'll come off of um, a new utility source power from CMP, I believe. So um, we've also added in some screening, some Trex fence as a composite material that'll go around the equipment. And um, my understanding was that there were some comments and questions made regarding landscaping that um, we could talk about if there's any specifics on that. I think, uh, yeah, generally, uh, we'd like to see uh, some sort of proposal that where you at least work with staff, um, which is usually relative to their comments of 
come back to us, show us how you think you're going to buffer these and put some landscaping in a little bit. And if, I, if I may ask, just sure. is that going to require us to come back in front of the board again, or is that something we can just do administratively? That would be part of a conditional uh, condition approval. Understood. Fair mm -hmm. enough. I think at, at, at where we stand, adding landscaping to this is not an issue for us on our behalf. That's good to know. Thank you. Um, that said, we have an opportunity for public comment this evening. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this? No. All right, I'm going to close public comment. Um, again, with just like the last project, uh, this is relatively straightforward. If there's any general questions that anyone on this board would like to ask, just go ahead. Yes, Rachel. Um, I, when I saw that this was a pay-for-use electric, uh, pay-for-use activity, I looked through your proposal and I actually didn't see it was pay for use. Um, so that was my first question. Is it, it is pay for use? Yes, but that's not part of our SAI's involvement with the project. That's uh, Electrify America. They'll handle that. How are you going to, how, how are people going to pay? Typically the the transaction is made by credit card. There'll be a credit card re uh, reader on the machines. There's also um, an app being developed by Electrify America to be able to use this, much as you would use um, any other apps on your phone that require some sort of monetary transfer. All right. The um, the other thing that you said is that this use was just for Walmart customers. Well, the uh, intent the intent is for Walmart customers to use that people that are traveling to the store to be able to park and charge and go do some of their shopping while their vehicle is charging. It's a little bit, it takes a little bit longer to charge your vehicle than it does perhaps, you know, if you went to the gas station. Um, so the intent is to really take the pain away when you're traveling to be able to stop, use the store, kind of forget that your car is actually charging, come out and you'd be ready to go back on your trip. Uh, but it, since it's open, uh, it could be used by other people, correct? correct? Uh, at what point would it be closed? And one of the reasons that I'm asking this is it, cre it raises issues of security. Is it uh, available? The intent um, would be 24 believe, hours. I believe Electrify America's intent for this this site would be for it to be 24 hours. So that raises questions of lighting and how long the lighting is on and security for people who are using that at night. Uh, according to what you're recommending, there's only one change, I believe. You're moving a pole someplace. Yes. Um, it's is that going to illuminate the area so that a woman coming home at night uh, when Walmart is closed, choosing to stop there to uh, charge her car, um, is not at risk? That there is enough adequate lighting and the security. The lighting is only is being moved approximately less than 10 feet. Um, in terms of security, I probably wouldn't limit it to just women, but um, there is some other lighting in the area too. So we don't have any intent to really um, affect the existing lighting that's on site. What time are the lights turned off at night? I don't know that answer offhand. What are the uh, Jamel? What do the ordinances say about when those lights are out? Do you know? Um, the ordinance calls for them to be dimmed. Um, we'd have to look on the actual Walmart site plan if there's an actual time called out for when they turn off. But I don't think they actually turn off um, at, the, at this parking lot. I, 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 again, part of my concern is that the, uh, it's going to be a 24-hour a day uh, activity and what sort of arrangements, uh, security arrangements, lighting arrangements uh, are made for that sort of an, an activity? So I guess, uh, you know, for from what my personal sense of this is that if you felt unsecured using those in the middle of the night because you don't have proper lighting, you wouldn't be there charging your vehicle and the store wouldn't necessarily be open at that point anyway. So, you know, you, level two chargers? I mean, no, they're level three. Sense of this. Level three for the fast charge? Correct. So typically you're going to recharge a vehicle in, in 30 minutes <coughs> and then you're out of it. Or at you least less charge. time than that to be able to get yourself an adequate charge to get home or to get your final destination. So it's really not, you're not going to be there for three hours shopping and having your car charged. These are, these are fast chargers. 
Yeah. I, again, though, to, to the point of uh, security and safety, this, if the store is open, the lights are on. Um, if somebody's choosing to use them after hours. Um, the only reason why I mean, it's probably considered 24 hours is it, it may be on a fob where, you know, like you, yeah. you go to a gas station, you can wave a wand in front of the gas pump and you get gas because it's got to be a credit card. They have systems like that. I don't know which proprietary unit they're going to use. They didn't indicate here, but that's really not part of the plan. It's not really what we need to be looking no. at as part of what... I am curious right. why you're moving that light 10 feet. I would think that you'd want to kind of divide the four parking spots up, and yet you're kind of moving it down further. Is there a, is there a reason for moving that light? To move it at all was to be able to, to make room for the, the footing for the, the dispenser. Um, to so answer your question, right where a dispenser was going to go. To move it. Um, in any sort of direction, I, I guess the best answer I would have for you is it arbitrary at this point if it was a, a question of moving it closer to the center of the site. I don't think that there's an issue with, with designing it or changing that um, on the site plans or, re or even redlining it um, to be able to install it in that location. <clears throat> Do we have any other um, questions or comments regarding this plan? I guess my only, I, I see where Rachel's going with this. I guess where it says waivers, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's waivers, but they're relying on an existing, uh, in, existing infrastructure that has already been permitted within the last, what was it? When was Walmart built over there within the last five to 10 years? So I guess what I'm, to clarify, we're not necessarily giving this project a waiver pass. It's part of an approved site plan for Grading, stormwater management, lighting, signage, et cetera. Yeah, those waivers are submission requirements that mm -hmm. they're looking to not submit because they believe they're not applicable for this application. So instead of the, the motion, I guess, that, that's in the, the draft motion that's in front of us, um, I guess I would just like to mention that they are there they may be getting a waiver but they're actually dovetailed they're at a facility that it's being dovetailed so that it's at a facility that meets the current requirements for each of these okay, okay. It's a, it, it is a different distinction i think mm -hmm. i think your point mm -hmm. you're waiving the need to put in these parts of these requirements because they're already there. I don't think we're waiting. I think we're waiting the resubmission of a new lighting plan, right? It's up to just new, right? We just don't need a new one. Right? I mean, it's... The word new doesn't do it. So I guess the part that I'm objecting to is not that it's not that they are are not applicable to the proposed project. It's that they are already installed or existing. Thank you. So, I mean, we're looking at an amendment, right? Yeah. I mean, the only thing that they're, well, I guess it's not the only thing they're amending. Okay. Our crack staff is, I think, Crack the code. So, uh, submission requirements is the is what we'll be waiving, not necessarily the plans. Right. That yeah. staff just figured that out for us. Yeah. Great, it's <laughs> great work. <laughs> Here for you guys. All right. So, with that, if there's no further comments on this plan, I I would expect that we're going to see many more of these things. I could. I mean, especially if you can keep charge your vehicle in less than 30 minutes. I mean, you could literally go to the local hardware store and charge your car right there, you know, while you're in there. So we're going to be seeing these things, just like at the Walmart with the, um, the bays, you know, to pick up your things. I'm surprised we haven't, we haven't come back for those already. So just pretty straightforward to me. <laughs> we'll, start, yeah, we'll start seeing these more frequently, though, I think, point taken. Um, all right, with that, I'm going to move to approve the site plan amendment. Project titled Electri America EV Charging Station, proposed by 
SAI Group, Electri America, as depicted on the plan set prepared by SAI Group, dated 4 19 with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings, as stated here uh, in the paperwork, waivers. One, we waive the following submission requirements because they are not applicable to the proposed project. A, grading plan, stormwater management systems, details and calculations, traffic analysis, off-site improvement plans, lighting plan, and signage plan. Conditions. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall revise the plan set to include A, additional plantings be between the proposed screening fence, B, additional plantings be between the proposed charging dispensers and the dry aisle located directly to the west, C, a stamp by a professional engineer. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Two, the applicant shall coordinate with the fire department to ensure the, the correct or cor current. current fire and safety codes are noted on the plans. That is the motion. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you, folks. All opposed? Abstain. Okay. One abstain for for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. you. Appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> Next item business is a staff report. Jamel. All right. At least I have a few things. Um, I think starting uh, today, we're going to start talking about our, in a lot of our uh, conditions of approval. The last condition is a pre-construction meeting. Um, which is sort of the kickoff to the construction project. So I'm going to start reporting on when we hold those meetings so you guys know what's going on and what buildings are going up that you've approved. So we had just had one for the Plaza, Oak Hill Plaza uh, project for the Infinity Credit Union and a multi-use office and residential building. So they're going to start construction soon. And just a reminder that the next meeting will actually start at 6.30 p.m. on June 10th, and that'll be the start time moving forward. That's what I have. Angel? That sounds wonderful. Thank you. Um, I know I should be able to make that work. I hope the rest of us can as well. So, um, Actually, minister you need more time to tell me all my comments. I, that's a very interesting and important topic. So yeah. I wouldn't mind coming in 30 minutes before the, the, the following meeting, too, if we don't get it all covered. Okay. Because I'd be very Yeah, I, I guess what I can do is give a pretty overview, bigger overview. And if, we, if you guys find you have questions, <laughs> Thank you, Angela. All right, uh, administrative amendment report. 
Uh, there's been two administrative approvals. Uh, one was at the Milton Cat uh, facility on Pleasant Hill Road for a new outdoor display area. And the other one was at the Dunstan Village development for a new trash and recycling area. Correspondence. Mm -hmm. Any correspondence? No. Planning board comments? Any comments tonight, folks? Yes. Yeah, I, I think as um, we get more and more of these EV uh, stations, fueling stations, and fueling becomes much more diffuse, <coughs> we're going to need to consider both the design and the security and the lighting uh, and the usage connected with them. And if we don't have ordinances that address that, uh, that's something that perhaps the council needs to consider and, and we could recommend at some point. Um, when fueling is of, of your car is limited to a gas station, then the gas station is open or it's closed, and there's somebody there. Uh, and when the lights are out, nobody's driving up. When you have a fueling station that's open 24 hours, uh, as people start to look at whether they need to start to recharge their cars, they may be stopping in dangerous situations where they just simply don't think about that. It's something uh, I felt that he was rather cavalier um, with his response. Uh, and it's something that certainly women have to think about all the time. How do we protect ourselves? How do we fuel our cars? How do we walk through a dark space? Um, how do we examine what's going on around us? And a lot of those answers come from well-designed, well-lit areas. Uh, and uh, frankly, I did not think that um, he addressed the issue. I don't think he was prepared to address it. I don't think they have thought about it. And I think as a planning board, it's something that we really need to start to consider as we see more and more of these stations coming online. Okay, thank you. Any other planning board comments? No. Um, motion to adjourn. You have a second, anyone? Second. All in favor? Thank you. <laughs>